Yeah. Can we, uh, can we start? Yeah, we have. We're all ready to go? Come on, six. Oh, yeah. well, that clock's fast, but we can go. Well, how fast is it? Well, by my clock, two minutes. But no, that's right. So I'm, I'm slow. I'm slow. I admit. Okay, so um, call this meeting to order. And is there any amendments to the uh, agenda? Uh, yeah. Or corrections? Not uh, really. Town of Sidgwood, Patterson, 117, 119 Edward Forsage Road. That should be presentation of phase three uh, plan for the uh, marina. That's at 7.30? At 7.30, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Carol, why do we have um, um, enforcement order for TKs at the bottom under field trips, and then we also have it as? Because I, I don't know. Because you need to sign it. You have to ratify it. I guess that's why. Did we do an enforcement order? <coughs> All right, but we're having a show cause for TK O'Malley's. It's at it's at seven forty-five. So aren't we putting the cart before the horse? Or? All right. Um. Okay. Well, we can. Let me go in the RDAs, but um, I, I got a request from Mr. Ornberg if he could just state something on that enforcement order um, because I guess they can't be here. So he wants to give us the, right. we've got a letter. Yeah. Okay. Should we approve the uh, minutes first? Yeah. I mean the agenda yet first? Yep. I second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. You know that we, actually we have the show cause at 745, so yeah, I understand. that'll go on. Yeah, but I, yeah, actually, I mean, Call Bill Orenberg, I'm here for Walter Collins is, uh, you know, if they had some, uh, screw up, we sent them certified mail, and of course the manager's on vacation, and I'm calling them today to find out what's going on, but to explain to the commission, I have another meeting tonight, I can't be here at 745, but I want to be at the agenda meeting, and I've submitted a letter to the chairman, but just to explain uh, what the situation is, and what the situation is, and what progress is, it was, uh, it was a dock system which perkins where TK O'Malley's that was permitted, built, was all for all last season and, and whatever. What happened is when the quarter deck was sold, Mike Bowman was getting his permits. Uh, it isn't in the place where it's supposed to be permitted. The angle of it's wrong. The engineering company, SciTech, and Jeff Lake of Sea and Shore, with forgetting about who, who did what, when, or whatever. Uh, they tried to do what they could do to get Mike Bowman so that he was open for what he has to do in the off season. Originally, what was happening is uh, Jeff Lake, and I used to get brought into this, was looking at to see if they could do some temporary things for the season, whatever. I got involved in this about two weeks ago. Walter Collins was under the impression that SciTech was trying to straighten this out. Jeff Lake was under the impression he contacted all the people, basically, not a lot was happening there. So I get involved with this to try to quarterback to get this fixed. Uh, the long and short of any temporary solution doesn't make any sense. We're too far into the season anyhow. And so, but as far as from Jeff Lake and from uh, Ray Quinn of SciTech, as soon as they're talking with Mark Patterson and also I'm into the DCP and Army Corps, and when the boating season is over, we're going to come back to the commission. <coughs> To do what's necessary to stick this thing where it's supposed to be. The thing's not where it's supposed to be, the angle of it's wrong. And so we're trying to fix trying to fix that and put it where it's permitted. <coughs> Nothing's different. How how that came to be, I don't know. But put it this way, it was open for, an, for a full season, used for a full season. Town launch, everyone was using it. And it was only that it came to realization, I think this April or May, when they discovered it was in the wrong place. So We'll be back to square this thing up, but it, it isn't it's something everyone's acutely aware of what the issue is. Mike Bowman, who's next door, his brother John Bowman, who's his lawyer, been in touch with Johnny. We 
trying to work out whatever's necessary to get this so it's in the right place so it doesn't interfere with Mike Foreman and it's supposed to be where it was originally permitted. So simply, I'm involved in this, with this thing now to kind of coordinate. SciTech, uh, Ray Quinn has committed to do what's necessary from their standpoint to get this squared up, as is uh, Jeff Lake, who was very good reputation as an installation guy. No one could really kind of believe that the angle of this was wrong, but it is wrong. So in a nutshell, that's where it is. I submitted to the chairman a letter indicating that, and I saw on the agenda when I became aware of this on Friday, I think it was, that I saw there were two places. I have another, I have another meeting. I can't be here at, at uh, 7.45, but I want to submit a letter which basically is a synopsis of what I just told them, uh, told the uh, commission. But in essence, a mistake was made in the field, and we're going to fix it. And we talked to the only person that affects is the neighbor. We're going to make sure that they have an ongoing discussions that everything's copacetic with them and that they made whole. Okay. Be because we advertised at a specific time, we'll take your letter, we'll read it then. Okay. And I understand your logistics of trying to do that, but it really would be unfair for us to discuss it Understood. more than that. But we'll take that piece, yeah, all right? Okay. And then we can discuss it at 745. Yeah, and, and what, what I said in my letter also is that, and with the, I keep them work closely with the board to make sure we follow all the applicable procedures to make sure to put, make this, put it where it's supposed to be. And it's more of an engineering and the other thing, but basically the policy of the harbor master is between, I think it's May 15th and October 15th, nothing happens in the harbor anyhow. Right. So basically that's where it is, but I get everyone together now and uh, obviously work closely with the commission. But then I said, you know, if from a commission standpoint when you discuss it, I said this, if you, I'll keep in touch with Jim and Paul, if Jim, is this you got handle on this yeah. one? All right. Uh, as to what's going, get advice and to move forward on that, you know, report back to the board. If the, if the board, you know, whatever it's two weeks, four weeks, and I want me to come back in and tell you about the progress, I'd be happy to do that, just that I get a little problem. Is Jeff Lake going to, who, he's the? He's the installation. So who is, who's the engineer bill, do you think, that will ultimately sort this out? Do you have Ray any? Quinn. They, okay. they already know what the story is. The story okay. is someone took some shot off something, or this guy didn't get a shot off something. It's so SciTech is still going to be the yeah, end? Exactly. All right. they're, the, they're the guys who did it, and they're going to make sure that the, you know all the instruments out and it's fixed. OK. All right. I, again, just because of the time, I think, Understood. in fairness, if anybody comes in on that, they should get it. We'll get the letter. So we can see, we'll speak at some point. I, I, I think that's the right thing to do. And I and just want yeah, to, they wouldn't but have any I'm representation if he didn't give them that piece. So. No, I understand, but what I'm saying is, is there's going to be discussion or whatever. If it's other than to have me back here in a couple weeks, I'd ask the We'll continue it or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'll give uh, the original letter. You have a copy. I'll give this to Carol. Carol. That'd be perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jim, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Are you copied on the correspondence? Maybe we should, if, if that's the... I, I will have, I'll email. So Jim keeps a copy of the cards on. So that one, uh, I'll send him a copy of that also. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. I, I, I sent the letter to the owner. Right. And it sounds like they had a whatever. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the first problem they've had there, but well. I sent it on time. I sent it in time. Oh no! Okay. Absolutely, you sent it. They just, yeah. you know, whoever was supposed to sign for it. Okay. From there, so Ser series of unfortunate events. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um. Do we want to move right to IDAs? Is that okay? Um, so on the August 15th, uh, 2011, during the 615 meeting, the Town Hall of the Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Gail Meehan for determination of applicability of Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Situate Wetlands Bylaw for recent dock activity and deck and float additions on property located at 16 Barry's Landing, situate about as another interested party is invited to attend. Good evening, Stan Humphreys with LEC. Um, Gail Meehan is on business and is out of town, so I'll be representing her tonight. Um, the property is located on the North River and um, about 10 years ago, the commission issued an RDA 
positive RDA for a, um, a gangway one and two floats to be put in a tier. And um, this past year, um, Ms. Meehan found that it was difficult to get from the upland to the gangway. She'd have to walk essentially through a fragment area. And that there was um, no water at the end of the dock at low tide. So she added a six and a half foot by 20 foot float to extend the T seaward towards the river and added a, a four by 14 deck that could get her from the upland to the gangway. Um, what I submitted as a plan <coughs> that would essentially be accepted by the chapter 91 program because it's less than 600 square feet in total is um, the arrangement of the floats and the gangway. And then on the bottom is a view of a proposed deck with a stairway entrance. What is built, as I said earlier, is a four by 14 part of that. The overall deck dimension is um, seven by 14 in order for them to have a bench. Um, I've heard from Miss Meehan already that she wouldn't do the stairs. It's probably more appropriate for some flagstone set in the ground. And that is essentially the, the project. We're looking to make this fully legitimate and go through the Chapter 91 and the core and uh, North River Commission. Okay. Yeah, I um, this letter here we got says fifteen. Wait a minute. Fifteen Barry's Lane. No, you know what? They're spelled differently. Six. It says small fear and float. This is back from April four. I was just confused. Actually, it's seven Barry's Lane. Maybe it isn't even the same thing. If Did you guys get plan, this? Chapter 31, Section 40, Small Pier and Float, 7 Berry Lane, Hummer Rock. So I... This I, is on the north. Yeah, yeah so now I'm wondering that I just connected the two. No, Todd, go ahead. I'm, I don't think they have anything to do with each other. Okay. So some of the work was already done, or it's all done. It's correct. The float was added this season, and then a four by fourteen part of the deck. I don't have any questions. I'm kind of at a loss as to why it didn't start off. I mean, it's Fragmites. It's everywhere. Um, what down there? Does, does the neighbor have one that's identical to the old stuff? Because I, I, I look there and I look down and I go, so the old stuff is still sitting here, which is right in their backyard, to 16. And then is, there, is this? Further over to the east or to the right of, uh, there's a dock right down their backyard that looks like this, like the old picture. And is there another set of stuff that's done over on the eastern corner of their property? I was there, and I'm, I'm, I'm confused because I did the original picture, but they have two boats. Yeah, it's All right, so I must have. It looked like the path came straight out of the back of 16, mm -hmm. but that's actually the abutters' property. Right, yeah, I did the same thing. All right, and, I ended up right there. and it looked like, and the other one looks like it's almost out of the back of the adjacent house. All right, so uh, let's see. <coughs> to do this work at this point, um, obviously. We, we, you did affect the, um, 
to put this deck in, you, you obviously change the, um, the thing. It's all within the 50 foot zone of a border and vegetated wetland and the 100 foot, 100 foot of the river and all that other stuff. Um, <coughs> and every pier and any, every dock that we've seen so far has gone through as a notice of intent. So I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble not making this an after the fact notice of intent since it's already built. I mean, every one of these come through and, uh, you know, if you're going for the other permits, it's almost the same paperwork, but it has to come through us um, to approve it. I, I just see too many things going on to see any way that it could be a notice of intent. Can you give me some explanation why why it isn't, um, or how it complies with the Wetlands Protection Act that uh, doesn't trigger notice of intent? Do you understand that some of it was in our <coughs> Yeah, I know, some of it was. What, what year was that originally um, approved, Stan? It was 2001. So they went through the process. The in previous owner went through the process. It's enough. Okay. This is a new owner. So they filed, they went, did a notice of intent in a Chapter 91. Now they just did, from our records, we can see just did a request for determination with the commission. Really? Right. For a dock back in 2001. And the North River. They, so they had to go through. But I don't think they went through, they didn't go to Chapter 91 and they didn't go to the port. How did they do that? I don't know. She doesn't understand it and she wants to correct it. Whatever it needs to be corrected. Okay. Was it 2001 or 2002? Yeah. The dock that was approved with an RDA in 2002. Is it okay? Is that that, that's what I'm reading. Maybe it was two th December 2001 for the North River Commission. In January of 2002 for the commission. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's just, um, I just, I, I just had a loss of why this doesn't trigger. It sounds to me that the original doc in 2001 never went through the correct process. And then we got a new owner who's done work out there without coming before the commission at all. But I mean, just, what happened in May, I think, needs an after the fact notice of intent. Right. Not RDA. But mm -hmm. whatever happened in 2001, I think, clearly needed the notice of intent. And, you know, chapter 91 is you know, four days mm -hmm. I, I think, Nancy, how do you think about this? Right. Well, I, I just, because I put a dock in right down the river from that uh, probably 15 years ago, and I remember the process pretty. Clearly, and it was pretty extensive. I mean, it was a notice and the North River Commission and the Army Corps, and a Chapter 91. I mean, it was two years of pretty difficult work. And, and this is in an, I, I can yeah. keep going or we can. Yeah, I mean, the only right. other question is what, should they remove the uh, extra, extra, um, dock that is not permanent at this point because obviously it may or may not get permitted. And well, they shouldn't have use of it until it's until it is permitted. Yes. I, I, I would go with a I would, yeah, that's, I would recommend that. You're gonna pull something out and we might let them put it well, in. Let's, no, let's, just well, the no, dock. if you if you had a legally permitted dock and you just went out and extended it and pushed it out into the waterway further, it no longer complies with the plan you already had approved and filed with everybody. Yeah. And that means well, it's I more useful. I understand that, but. I mean, it's no, no issue to take, they can take the dock, the extra piece of, t of dock out and put it on land and store it until what time they get a permit to use it because I, I can't see someone having the use of a piece of, of something that hasn't been permitted for a couple of years, because it's probably going to be two years until we this is all resolved with everybody, because um, they didn't come to it, yeah, because they haven't followed the process. Uh, I don't know. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. Well, what you were saying. I mean, I think this is go. 
for the filing. Right. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, how is the dock secured? By pilings? It looks like it's probably by moorings. Well, that's... Uh, no, the upper part of the gangway is secured by two piles. The, the upper, upper part, part of the gangway, but the, the this, actual this dock. new unapproved dock, how is it secured? By the, by the two moorings that you see in the, in the diagram. Yeah. Oh, those? They were approved yeah. in 2002. The walkway with the ropes, is that what you're referring to? That's new. That's all new. That wasn't. Yeah, no, he's right. talking about how well, they float out, out, the float out in the. In, in the harbor, a lot of times you see them, you know, secured by piles, but the other way to do them is moorings no, and it's, chains. No, this is floating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's usually moorings and cross chains. So. Yeah, that looks okay. So um, put it there. Well. Yeah. Jim, we're. I think we've got to start all over. This is on top. This is the regular yeah. gangway yeah. that was yeah. there before. And yeah. then they yeah. built that little yeah. thing. What did they put that on? Mm -hmm. Like that's like on what mm -hmm. they dug mm -hmm. in for the 50s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but you've got this proposed deck area, and, and it looks like there's a considerable amount more construction, which I, I don't personally agree with. The other thing, Jim, just, I don't know if you have dealt with some of these before, but there was a whole bunch of regulations on, like, the height of the walkway going out. Um, I forget, one, one agency doesn't want it higher than, I think the North River Commission from a VISTA standpoint, they don't want it over so many, they, their elevation was string, you know, fairly stringent, and then Army Corps and an environmental standpoint, you wanted it high enough and spacing between the decking and, it was, yeah, it was, right. Yeah. The North River Commission also doesn't want to float in the water, so they may run into a conflict between the Commission would rather keep the floats off the tidal area and let the tidal organisms and the grasses maintain their viability. So we'd rather put the float out into the water, but the North River Commission, from the previous violent review, would prefer that the floats don't go in the water and that they be in the tidal area. But there's still something about that the float's not supposed to sit on the um, on the mud. At on low the mud flats, yeah, yeah. And then I'm just wondering if this walk that she constructed is even at the proper elevation. <coughs> well, that's it's landward of Mean High Water. It's in the BDW, not the salt water, the salt marsh. Okay. The gangway that was approved and has been installed for some time. That's over salt marsh. Okay. And if it makes any difference, which it may not at this point with the discussion I've heard, uh, she's happy to, to settle for that 14 by 14, 4 by 14 deck. It doesn't have to be the 7 by 14 with the bench. It can be exactly what's out there. Not in the BBW. You know what? We don't even know what the what the uh, the resource areas and exact delineations of where they are at, at this point anyway. So we're speculating because it could be, you know, it, it could be different than what we think. Should until it's been until, until it's, everything's been done, we don't know. We're just speculating. They have a permanent. 
a permanent thing that I think they should have use of, of what they had originally. And I don't see this walkway as being too much different than whatever was there before to get there. They can claim that's a maintenance issue. So I can't see giving an extra dock. Okay, they, they gave before, I can in none of us were on the board. I was here then. That wasn't going to happen. But anyway, it did. filed the RDA and got a, a negative determination that they didn't have to file a notice of intent. But they also didn't file for all the other permits. Just because you didn't right. So right now, what's up there, you know, the new stuff needs a notice of intent. But it also needs all the other approvals, and it sounds to me what's out there, the only thing it's got is a negative determination from the old Situ Conservation Commission. It doesn't have the other state and federal approvals that it needs. So right. at this point here, I, I would say the new work needs an after the fact notice of intent. <coughs> she didn't have anything for that. But even what's out there, before she did any work in May of 2011, Someone dropped the ball and never got the federal and state approvals they needed. So the miles will get it all. Right. Well, but, but I would start here with an after the fact notice of intent, not an RDA. That's ridiculous. We need an approval right. of some sort from the commission before we go to the other state. So. I agree. We need more of you. Frank, can I make a motion? Sure. I make a motion for a positive determination. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They need a notice. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, how about oh, Columbia Gas Blades Road? Uh, on August 15th, uh, 2011, during 6:15, meeting the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission on will act on the request of Columbia Gas and Mass for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act in the Situ Wetlands Bylaw to replace the gas main on property located along Glades Road, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Hello, my name is Joshua Bose from Merrill Associates in Hanover, and I'm representing Columbia Gas of Massachusetts uh, for this project. Our office submitted an RDA application to the commission for a uh, gas main pipe replacement project in the uh, the area that the new gas main is proposed is along Glades Road, and it, it, it's between Gannett Road and Bailey's Causeway. Um, that stretch of Glades Road that goes along the seawall there is where this project is proposed. It's shown on the various um, exhibits that were submitted to the commission and also uh, um, shown on this board here. The, um, it is proposed to install the gas main or replace the gas main that's on the west side um, of Glades Road is beneath the existing pavement. So the um, work is on the fringe of the flood zone, obviously, um, the flood zone along Glades Road. It's within the 100-foot buffer to the coastal bank, and it's uh, just outside the 100-foot buffer to a BBW um, that's located behind the houses, the west side of the houses that are along Glades Road. This green line represents the BBW. It's be between Bailey's Causeway and it runs south down to, I believe, uh, Cliff Estates Road, which is a cul-de-sac right here. And the red line here represents the 100-foot buffer to that BBW. So that, rep you know, that shows that we are just outside of that with a new gas main mm -hmm. project. Basically, uh, I think we've been in front of the commission before with these projects. We, the, um, the procedure is to install the re required erosion control measures. The, <coughs> the pavement is then saw cut and the trench is dug. The uh, new main is installed. And all the all the main or all the trenching that's done is, is backfilled in the same day. In other words, there's no open trench that's left open. Um, spoils, there's no spoils left overnight. There's restrictions to limit the work to happen um, outside of rainy conditions. It wouldn't be happening today, obviously. And um, silt catch basins will be provided. There'll be silt filled the fabric beneath the catch basin rims to collect any runoff. You know, any if we got a splash shower, anything that may travel um, into the catch basin. So. Through the nature of the work and the, the erosion controls that are uh, proposed, we are requesting a negative determination from the commission uh, for this project. I don't have any questions. Me either. No, it's just that we, you forgot the top of the coastal bank. It's another resource area, but it doesn't really affect our determination. 
Yeah, yeah I mentioned we were in the 100 foot <laughs> buffer to the top of the coastal uh, tanks. Yeah, and, and the beach and all that. Just that question. Nope. Yeah, gentlemen. Anybody in the audience? I make a motion for a negative three determination. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. Be a busy place out there. Actually, it'll be a negative two and three. Two and three? Two and three. Some of the key resource area. Okay. Should I change the motion? Okay. Uh, Horn, 101, 102. Is it 104, CJC, addition parking and landscape? I'm so confused. I don't know. Anybody here for Horn? Um, why don't we we'll hold this one for? Um, Burgess, Mueller. Um, let's see. On August 15th, uh, 2011, during the 615 meeting of the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Colleen Burgess and Hans, Hans Mueller, Collie, I'm sorry, for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situa Wetlands Bylaw <coughs> for various repairs due to storm damage on property located at 130 Oceanside Drive, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. You're up. We filed an RDA for some of the minor work we wanted to do on our property. Um, basically, we want to just repair some of the damage that was done in the December 26th storm. So uh, we want to do some shingling, replace some sliding doors, and um, work on this portion of the wood deck or patio. Uh, so just re re repairing and uh, maintaining the original footprint and construction. So this is basically no work on the ground? That's correct. We'll be using the existing um, foundation of the deck that's already there for the three season porch and we're just replacing damaged uh, wood and storm windows that have been put out of uh, line. Yeah. Okay. Todd? You have a nice looking dog. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a prerequisite. Captain, yes. <laughs> Scott? is underneath these sliding glass doors it looks like there's a concrete foundation and you gotta basically fill that back in to make it structurally solid still um it's pretty solid as it stands it's never had an issue oh so the, the underneath the deck that's oh yeah that's wood that's, that's the wood, wood covering that was damaged by the waves and rocks hitting it oh all right so it has not like a structure yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a Tony, Tony? Uh, and what are you going to do with that which you have repaired? We have not done repairs You're recently. You're going to burn it? You're going to no, no, burn a dumpster. A dumpster. And, and, and throw it out in the ocean. Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> some well, people would. <laughs> yeah. But I think we're a little bit too far away from that. Permit. Tell me. Okay, a motion. I make a motion for a negative three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, okay. you Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think Mr. Horn's here, but since he was late, we're going to jump to Donahue's and then come back. To <laughs> so let's see. Donahue for Cushing Landing. Replace existing deck. On August 15th, in the 2011 uh, meeting, the Town Hall Citra Conservation Commission will act on the request of David and Kathleen Donahue for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Citra Wetlands Bylaws to replace an existing deck on property located at number four Cushing Landing, Citra, but others and other interested parties are invited to attend. You're up. Replacing a deck. You are? 
David and Kathy Donahue. Yes. Yes. We <laughs> <laughs> said the, the previous people were, that was um, our old house, the, the people just before us. So oh, okay. We, we, lost, we lost something when uh, we put the deck in 40 years ago. We just had to ask them to. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It is, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, just, it just with the deck's been there for 35 years, and uh, so we just it's time to replace it. Okay. So it's basically the same. You're going to use the same footings and everything. Yeah, we're going to put in one more uh, sauna tube. I think is what they're thinking would be wise. Okay. Yeah. What year did you build that? 79. Is that right? We left there in 78. Wow. February 7th. <laughs> yeah. Penny? No, I'm I'm all set as long as they're using the same basically footprint. One more sign Right. Okay. Todd? No questions. Scott? No questions. No questions. Sorry. <laughs> You're not going to ask them what they're going to do with the wood? You don't care if they throw it in the ocean? What are you she's going to burn it. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to burn it. Okay. Yeah, I know she's what she's going to do with it. Kevin? Yeah. Jim of Paul? I think Mr. Wiley did a pretty good job there. Huh? <laughs> Great. Um, a motion? Audience. Oh, anybody in the audience? Sorry. I make a motion for a negative three. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And go back to Horn. Um, on August 15, 2011, during the 615 meeting, the Town Hall Citro Conservation Commission will act on the request of Christopher S. Horn for the termination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaws to construct an addition parking area and landscape on property located at, is it 1004? Yes. Chief Justice Cushing Highway situated. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Fill us in on what you want to do, and then we can ask you some questions. Okay. Um, we're putting a, um, an addition on the back side of the existing tennis club to house the indoor pool. The building that's being added on and situated is about 2,000 square feet. The remainder of the project 9,000 is equal asset. Um, the area where the addition is going to be situated is in the same area. Now, um, the wetland area in the back of the building um, has always been there. It was, an, there is an access road there for the fire department. It's been um, there since the last um, construction eight years ago. So basically, it's just a small portion of the buildings in situate. Yes. And um, real small. Um, yes. I brought the back of my building to the property line. It's about six feet. Okay. Is there going to be any more parking out front? There's no parking out, additional parking outside. Both planning boards um, have approved the parking size. Yeah. The building is a very large building, but yeah. it's very specific, and there's only 16 people that can fit into the about 28,000 square feet, so that they're mostly tennis courts. Yeah. The same as the pool. The pool's a large area, but there's only six lanes, so they look at 12 as an occupancy. So 38,000 square feet at a 43,000 square feet, it's a limited amount of people in the building at one time. Okay. Go ahead. I have no questions. No questions. How do you get into this? Because I, uh, I, I, yes. I couldn't get it. <laughs> the entrance is in the, in, in the there front. The entrance is in the front. There is no entrance from the back side. Okay, so there's only still one entrance to the building, the existing entrance. As you come up the driveway there, it's in, in the so you don't, you don't enter through the pool area. 
We can't have people just entering into the pool area because of the safety. So they still have to come in the front door to the front desk and then there's actually a passcode to get to the back corridor to get into the pool. So that the entrance to the building is still the same. The only exits out of the building is the fire exits out to the back parking lot area as you see. Okay. I, I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to how to how to see this piece of property as I um, you walk around the building. Early. But then there are a lot of places I can't figure out. <laughs> <laughs> when you come up the drive, if you come up the, the, the driveway, and if, you, if you're looking at three, there's a large piece of ledge. There's a, there's a corner here in this area here. Yeah. Okay, that's the entrance. Yeah, I know. But how could I, I mean, without, without going through your building, how, yeah. how, did, how could I have gotten in? To the back. You, you can't get in. I can't get in. Correct. There's no access to the pool, direct access to the pool without going through the lobby and the front desk check. Okay. So yeah, I'm not so sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> Smarter than you thought. <laughs> so you've already been to the planning board? We've been to the planning board in situates. The planning board in situates um, next meeting is on the 8th, which is the day after the last planning board to Cohasset. Both planning boards, um, their requirements as of today um, is only the entrance. They're, when we first built the club, we were the first ones um, on 3A, so it was just a road, no lighting, small sign. Planning board in Cohasset requested a light down at the end, and planning board in situ would agree to that, and they want to um, make, just make sure the visibility is always kept clear. Um, and that's what they mean. Sorry, this is the entrance. Okay. And I assume that okay. you have the luxury of having Cohasset's oh, wow. agent here. Well, actually, they have four Cohasset on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any issues? I'm anticipating Cohasset's going to issue a negative rate. So okay. No issues. All right. Anybody in the audience? motion for a negative three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. We don't have a set time for the IDAs, so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we can start right into uh, Farina, number 10 and 12, Ocean Drive, Hummerock, install boulders. It's withdrawn. Okay. Oh. Uh, Blaney, 274 Central Ave, septic rip wrap protection. A motion. I make a motion to continue Blaney, 274. Central Lab to September 19th at 6.40. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Town of Situate, DPW, Stockbridge Road, sidewalk continued. Don't hit the wire to the computer or, or you'll be in big trouble. Big problem? Yeah, we've had it before. Denied. I don't want that. You yeah. just forgot. Uh, all right, Justin Lambert, Horsey Wing Group, here from the town of Situate. Paul Anger from Public Works. What we have here is 5,000 linear feet of sidewalk along Stockbridge Road, starting at the existing sidewalk near the MBTA, approximately house number 238. Mm -hmm. Extending down to Vinyl Ave, connect to the school, progress safe roads to school. We're in the buffer. As you can see, I've marked out the wetland in green, the 50-foot buffer in red, and the 100-foot buffer in yellow. Um, I believe last time there was questions about how many trees are proposed to be removed, and it is 14 trees. There is one. 
within the bump zone, and it's a 48 inch tree. It's located right out front, 162 Stockbridge. There's also questions about drainage. Stockbridge has some areas of existing drainage, which we've, we've shown here in blue. We have, in areas where we're putting curb, we have proposed curb for the sidewalk, six inch curb where we're not allowing the runoff to go directly into the yards of the wetlands out back. We're, we're proposing drainage systems. We're proposing deep sump catch basins for some kind of treatment, and then discharging uh, to the existing well, and that's just for the roadway. For the sidewalk itself, the new impervious, we have uh, proposed a trench drain, a trench drain stone. It'll go the extent of the sidewalk. It'll be off the shoulder. It'll, it'll give us volume to attenuate the runoff. It'll filter the runoff. We also have an underdrain system that, so it, it, if it has a problem with the larger storms, it'll collect and then move down the line where we're connecting to the existing and proposed drainage. The erosion control, we do have erosion control proposed. I know that was a question last time. We have uh, silt sacks and all the catch basins. Ooh. New and proposed. Um, we have silt sock where the sidewalk is directly adjacent to the wetland. On the opposite sides where the sidewalk is opposite the wetland, we have silt sock, I mean silt, uh, silt sack in the catch basins. So anything off of the sidewalk construction will be collected in the existing drainage and will have the specs of the, of the uh, contract so the contractor has to maintain all those silt sacks, keeping you know, three quarters empty all, at all times. Um, I believe that co covers what I have of questions, but any new questions we have again? Answer. No, I don't. Todd? Um, I just was wondering where the sidewalk is going to be switching sides, um, and, and this is a not really not really conservation related. Um, it's something I wanted to bring up for future, and I'm glad that you're here because there's safety issues in my mind with kids crossing streets and sidewalks I with text. Okay. There's only one crossing. There's one. Okay, only one. All right, and when is that? We have one public forum already, but we have another one that we're gonna uh, we're gonna schedule very soon. Okay. I just want to. We should be careful, Todd, to you know. I understand everybody's different concerns, but should try to make sure that we keep our purview to the. Well, they're um, crossing the street because of the wetlands. No, because uh, the sidewalk starts on this side of the street at Vinyl Avenue and continues up. And then the connecting sidewalk is on the opposite side of the street of that union. So there must be a crossing somewhere along there. Okay. Last, the last meeting, I was under the impression that the plan was made to cross away from wetlands. But no, it's that's more not the issue. Telephone poles than wetlands. Okay. It, it's a combination telephone poles, wetlands. I mean, we, we try to, we, we don't want to impact directly into the wetlands. So it's, it's one of the, there's a lot of re, you know, resources that we had to take into consideration. And traffic rules, it would be another public forum where, you know, where that, where is that crossing on there with sight lines and everything else. Okay. Probably could talk later. Yeah, that's fine. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. I have no questions. No questions. Um, that tree on uh, 162 Stockbridge, is it, that's in the resource area? If it's not, it's in the 100 foot buffer. In the 100 foot? Yep. Yeah, I, I see where it is. I'm, I'm just wondering whether we should demand any mitigation because, because of it. That's a big tree. That's been around for a while. Are there any plantings proposed with the sidewalk project at all? Other than loam and seed, there are no trees at this time. A lot of the trees are encroaching onto the, the road in some areas, so they are hazards. Some, some of them, I wouldn't say all of them. Kevin? Okay. Um, I guess the, the other concern that we had was just the discharge of, that, of any water 
whether you're going to do any filtering or, or, or anything like that. Um, I don't know if you... Uh, well, I, 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 the, the last person that came here mentioned bioretention. We just had so little room in the right-of-way. It's such a tight right-of-way to do surface drainage. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are, we are doing filtering with our trench trench drain. I mean, that, that is a stone filter. For the, for the roadway we're improving, we're, we'll be collecting in the catch basins, um, oil, water, I mean, you know, separation. You are doing that with we the basins. That. But, so that's an improvement on existing additions. Instead of directly shoulder discharging right to the wetland, we're keeping it in the street. We're putting in deep sump catch basins and hoods. Okay. And then you pump those or clear those. Do you have a maintenance yeah, program? Yeah. And they're cleared regularly. Yes. But just the concern is obviously that most of that continues to drain on to the Red Maple Swamp, which ultimately runs into our reservoir. Definitely. And I guess there was just a couple of abutters that were here the last time that were sort of concerned about runoff onto their property. I think that was addressed. Mm -hmm. There'd be some berms in their driveway. Or, or whatever to make sure that that water wasn't diverted. Yep, we'll have the rolled berms for all the driveways. Okay. Yeah. All right. I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Fern Properties LLC, 214 Thomas Clapp Road. Do you want a when motion? One one week or a month? Did they? they at this point, they requested to be on until the next hearing, which would be the Okay, I make a motion to continue Fern Properties, 214 Thomas Clapp Road, till August 29th at 6.30. So I got All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's the 29th? Yeah, August 29th. Berwick, number 17, New Driftway, redeveloped parcel, new building, parking, patio, fence. On August 15th, 2011, at 7 p.m., the Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citrus Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Greenbush Realty Trust, Robert Berwick, trustee, to redevelop the parcel to include a new building, reconfigure parking, and other site improvements on property located at 17 New Driftway Situate. Abutters and other interested parties were invited to attend. Greenbush Realty Trust, uh, Bob Berwick, the applicant and property owner. Um, we're looking to redevelop the property known as 17 New Driftway. 
This is uh, the former Raymond's Paint Store, which has operated there for a number of years. We have two situate residents that are looking to expand their businesses there. Uh, the Ball Dance Studio is looking to move into this building, as well as a new restaurant called the Backyard Burger Bar, uh, owned by Joan Wilson. The existing site, you can see it on sheet two of the plans submitted, the property line shown in bold, a number of existing buildings on the property. There's the uh, Raymond's Paint Store itself, which is approximately 5,000 square feet of area. In outbuildings, there's a garage in the back parking lot. There's a kind of a maintenance storage shed that's on the property. Uh, a couple other various sheds. The property is developed right now. This is a bituminous parking lot that goes around the back side of the building. Uh, there's gravel parking area. You can see kind of a limit of gravel that goes around the back. There's the um, Hammerheads Bar and Grill is there right now, that little food trailer. For resources on the site, what we have is we have FEMA Flood Zone AE at elevation 11. That's shown in blue. And then we have the riverfront area. We have the mean high water line, which is shown in purple on this. The 100-foot inner riparian zone cutting through the site and the 200-foot riverfront area. So the entire site itself is located within the 200-foot riverfront area, and that's to the first Herring Brook that you can see is our southern property line. Abutting this property is all business zoned properties. Uh, a number of the residents, though, to the north, these are uh, residential apartments located on Ford Place. To the east and to the west are business properties. To the south is the river, uh, the medical building at the corner on the driveway. There's no endangered species habitat, no vernal pools on this site or within 100 feet of it. Sheet three of the plan set goes over the proposed project, which is primarily the conversion of the, of the paint store into the two, uh, the two primary, <laughs> the studio for the dance in the front, and the restaurant, which is in the back. Each one takes up approximately 2,500 square feet of surface area. Uh, adjacent to that, uh, we're going to be adding uh, a couple of new doors to the side of the building. We're redoing the roof. We're painting the facade. But there's no real additions being proposed to the building. So we're staying within the existing building footprint, using the existing building uh, as much as possible. Other site improvements, we're proposing a new permeable paver patio. Uh, it's approximately 24 by 24. You can see that on the edge of the building here. We have an access walkway from the back restaurant to that patio. Uh, that'll serve both as outdoor seating as well as this provides an emergency access that we needed uh, on the far side of the building. Another building on the site, we're removing the garage that's in the back. We're removing the two sheds that were along the river. And we're adding a new structure. This is a 10 by 20 uh, ice house. It's a walk-up self-service ice house. It's a completely contained building. Uh, it's it's a ba basically a large vending machine. You walk up, put your money in, and it spits ice out into a uh, bag of buckets for you. The existing parking lot, uh, we're going to overcoat it with a new coat of asphalt. We're going to restripe it. Um, you can see the limits here of what's, of what's to be repaved. Uh, this area over here we're proposing is gravel parking. This is a, um, a crusher run gravel surface. It's similar, similar to what you might see down at the Satuic Tavern that they use down there. Landscaping on the site. We're proposing uh, some evergreen plantings. Basically, it's all screening for the abutting properties. Uh, arborvitaes over here. We're proposing a, a row of hedges all the way around the patio to limit anyone from going off the patio. Uh, other improvements, we have street trees coming in on this main, the main thoroughfare. We have uh, Bradford pears. We have trees located within the parking area uh, on the island. For the drainage on this site, uh, what we're required to do is we're required to mitigate drainage um, for any new construction that is proposed because this is a redevelopment project 
it doesn't have to fully comply to the stormwater management policy. Uh, what we're proposing is we're proposing an improvement by taking, there's an existing grass swale which right now just collects water off the parking lot and sends it down to some riprap where it enters into the first herring brook. We're converting that swale into a rain garden. We're going to put uh, a couple of check dams in it and planting so you're actually getting some treatment now before that water hits the first herring brook. The packet I handed out uh, reviews basically the resources on site. Um, the FEMA flood zone, we're not proposing any fill within that floodplain. We're not altering that capacity of that resource. The primary resource here being the riverfront area, uh, 310 CMR 1058-5, discusses the redevelopment standards, which I've outlined here. Uh, requirement A is that the proposed work has to result in improvement over the existing conditions. We feel that the project complies to that um, because there's a reduction in impervious surface within the 100-foot buffer zone. So we're moving impervious surface further away than what currently exists in that river. Um, we're converting the drainage system from just a conveyance system to now a treatment system. Uh, and we're increasing the landscaping and vegetation within the 200-foot river. Requirement two is that the stormwater management has to be provided according to the standards. Again, the conversion here to a uh, rain garden of that grass channel uh, complies with that requirement. Uh, the project would be exempt um, from the pre and post rates of runoff due to the tidal effects on the river. Um, however, where there's no increase in impervious, we're not increasing the rates or the volumes of runoff from this site. Uh, Requirement C is that the proposed work shall not be closer than the existing conditions. Um, you'll see that the sheds that were over here you know, were structures. They were located 22 feet from the river. Um, the newest structure here, the ice house, is now located 83.6 feet from the river, so we're increasing the structure setbacks. Raymond's paint store itself, the new dance studio, we're not changing that. We're not putting it any closer to the river. So. We feel that we comply with that. The limit of work on the southern side of the property is the existing edge of pavement. Again, we're just overlaying that, so we're not going off the pavement section with any of the uh, impervious work, other than the landscaping and the creation of the rain garden. Requirement E is that the proposed work shall not exceed the amount of degraded area and I prepared this, this kind of color presentation plan here, which shows two things. The top here, this shows the existing conditions at the site. You'll see in blue, this is the existing impervious surface. And in yellow, you'll see the existing degraded area. To be classified as degraded area, the area has to generally be free of topsoil, free of woody vegetation, have been destroyed <coughs> in an abandoned bump, uh, dumping ground. So you'll see that the um, impervious surface right now within the 100 foot buffer is 19,224 <coughs> square feet. And down here on the bottom, this represents the proposed conditions. You'll see that we're adding some green space by adding the landscaped islands, and we've also gotten rid of some of these funky bump outs in the pavement. So we're able to reduce that 100 foot buffer down to 19,184. So it is a reduction within the 100 foot buffer. Uh, and then between the 100 and 200, uh, there's a slight increase, but overall there's not an increase in, in impervious surface. Requirement F discusses uh, mitigation if we were to propose new development of this site going into areas that previously weren't degraded. We're not doing that. Every, every place where we're working here has previously been disturbed. Uh, that also applies for uh, requirement G. Again, mitigation if we were going into previously undisturbed areas. So, all in all, the uh, project itself, it's going to continue to to drain the way it does, except now we're going to be getting treatment. 
we have maintained the um, impervious surfaces of the site. Uh, other features that we're adding at the edge of the parking lot over here, we're adding a uh, stone uh, filter trench, so any sediment that's coming off the parking lot will have a chance to filter before it enters the river. Uh, and then generally the landscaping improvements, we feel all comply with the requirements to be issued in order of conditions. This project has been before the Zoning Board of Appeals where we got unanimous approval, as well as the Planning Board where we got unanimous approval. Uh, we're anxious to begin pending your review. DEP had no comments on this project. Penny? Where's the grease? Um, the grease sheet four shows the uh, grease trap for the restaurant. Yeah, the grease trap. I, yeah. I lost the word. Yeah. Yeah. So coming out the back of the, uh, the restaurant where the kitchen will be, there's a new 1,500 gallon grease trap. And then it ties into, this is all tied into municipal sewer. Okay. Oh, okay. So you're using the same footprint. We don't have any problem there. Um, you are putting a patio in, but you're getting rid of that building. Yeah, the in the patio, it, it is pervious uh, yeah. paves. paves, paves. Okay. No, that's it, Todd. I don't have any questions. Scott? Um, yeah, I was kind of looking for grass swell, swell a little bit that they have there, whatever they collection thing. Yeah. <clears throat> it seemed like some of that water coming in there may be coming from the road. Is there going to be anything actually to off of the driftway itself actually making it in there because of the way it, I think it's a yeah. it's a down into the property. Yeah. So are you going to be? We're not changing the grade out there at the entrance at all. So. It, it does. It does take a little bit of a bit of runoff, and you'll see on on sheet four here, where the where the swale is. That'll continue to get that. So runoff. you're not going to alter any of that. There's not like going to be a around a curve to get in. Because right now, I think you just come off pavement and you end up on it. Right. It comes on off dirt <laughs> or gravel, yeah, or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Off the pavement onto riprap. No, no, no. I mean from the from from driftway. Th from the driftway or new driftway, actually, whatever it's called out there. So. I just, I, I did notice that some of it was actually probably coming from the road, um, which you shouldn't be responsible for taking care of, but, <laughs> um, so, all right. Uh, and the only other question, is any of the area along the Herringbrook possibly BBW at all? Because there is, seem to be some, some stuff near the edges. I'm not sure if it changes any of this, it's just a, it is important to make sure we have all the, um, the all the uh, resource areas uh, on the application and it's complete because I think we had that actually was flagged two years ago when they wanted to cut down some trees from the uh, from in the mill the, from the mill and stuff they they had flagged a bunch of stuff down I don't remember how far they went I I had Brad Holmes go out and walk the site. Um, and he didn't, he didn't think there was any BBW, he didn't flag anything. Um, I wish I had a little bit clearer of a picture of that, but what that is, is you'll, you'll see here, this is looking in from New Driftway toward the site. On the left-hand side, there's a chain link fence that runs essentially the whole property line. On the opposite side of that trench is where the embankment starts for the river. Right. It's primarily an armored embankment, it's all stone. And a couple of years back, uh, there was significant phragmites along that whole bank, and they treated it. They had uh, Chris Paladin come in, remove it, um, and, and, and treat it. So Brad didn't Brad didn't flag any BBW there. Yeah. I don't know if Paul or, had, or Jim had looked at it and thought. I mean, going by just what they did was is that. Nothing checked for boarding vegetative wetlands. They just basically said river fronted area and area that the front has you know, been developed in the past. So. Mm -hmm. Which is a question. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Paul? No questions. Tony? Um, 
this, the new patio that you're going to uh, build, which is closer to the uh, uh, to the brook, I guess. Uh, what what's that surface going to be? It's a uh, paved stone paver. It's a uh, it's a concrete paver. It's a block paver that's pervious. So it's it's like a sponge or like pervious asphalt, so water will go through it. And and how is it one connected to the other? Are you going to cement them in? Uh, no, it's dry laid. Dry laid. Okay. Um, you made a comment that. You probably explained it. I didn't get it. You were moving the impervious surface away from the uh, from the brook. Yes. The Give me that one again. Looking at the existing conditions at the top here, yep. you'll see in blue, this is the impervious surface that exists right now on the site. This is the 100-foot inner riparian zone. Right. So within that 100-foot inner riparian zone, right now the blue surface uh, is 19,224 square feet. That's asphalt parking, the sheds, the building, um, makes up that. The proposed conditions, you'll see again, here's the 100-foot inner riparian, but we've removed a landscape island now. We've taken that out of the pavement. We've, we've removed, you'll see up here that there are some jogs in the asphalt. We've now cut those in a straight line. So we've removed some asphalt there, and we've removed the two sheds that were impervious. So in, in effect, the only thing that you've moved away is the two sheds. I mean, let's, let's call a spade a spade here. <laughs> We've, we've removed over 100 square feet. And we've you've moved, a, you've moved 100 square feet, but you've only moved those two sheds away from the brook. Everything else is, is, is still there. Right. That's, everything else is the existing building and existing parking lot. Yeah. yeah, you've cut out a couple hundred square feet. Correct. Okay, so away is not, okay. Um, on these plans that we have, Yes. Um, do do we have the 50 and the 100 actually shown on them? Because I couldn't find it. You all, all you have yeah. is the 100. 100. Do we have it on these plans? Yeah. The 100's on those plans, yes. Oh, really? Yes. Is it? I, okay, I didn't see it. Okay, fine. Kevin? No questions. Jim or Paul? So is the discharge that comes into the lot now going to still run through that riprap area that I'm assuming that the town did that when they did the um, work on the sewer? Yes. And they took an easement and came onto your property and then dealt with that with the... Uh, they, they actually mitigated it. Uh, it was I, yeah, yeah. No, I recall. Yeah. We got some great deals from the MBTA. Yeah. Yeah, what we're, what we're proposing, again, on that channel is basically to... I'm sure you were happy with it as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> it's right here. You'll see right now the channel's running at elevation 10 uh, and minus. We're coming up to elevation 10.2, creating a berm, so you're getting a settling area now. Okay. That water will come in over that existing riprap into that settling area, top over into the second area. In that settling area, that's where we'll have the plantings that, actually, I have those shown on sheet two of that handout is a typical rain garden, um, and it specifies some of the plantings. Great. I, I don't know what the, uh, what the grading is showing, but there, is, there really isn't a significant um, amount of runoff coming from the drip plant. Right. They really didn't address it. Yeah. Okay. see that soil slightly. Yeah, here. no, I'm pretty aware of it. We had, it was an issue for the commission back when they were, doing the MBTA, the well, well yeah. the town was doing the sewer doing the project and it flooded. And, <laughs> us. and through no problem, through no fault of Mr. Burwick, it right. was the problem.
project that was going on with that. Okay. All right, I make a motion to close. Okay. Yeah, anybody in the audience for Raymond's paint? Uh, 17, the new driftway. Yeah. I make a motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like a new facelift for Greenbush. I miss Raymond's paint, though. That was my job in junior high school. I bet. I mean, that was the Marappa. That's the same story. Yeah. yeah. I won't tell you what we treated that bank with. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear it either. But it just broke my heart. You know, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. As Crowley, that was one of my jobs, was to keep cutting back that yeah. frag mighty. That, I must have made a few hundred bucks over the course of... Ten years. That's yeah. why I bought all the paint. Crowley, <laughs> Lot 1, Glades yeah. Road. Good luck with that. Uh, on August 15th, 2011, at 7:10 p.m., the Town Hall Citro Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Citro General Laws, and Section 30700. Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Peter and Amanda Crowley to build a single family dwelling on property located at Lot 1 Glades Road, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. large piece of property has about 117,494 uh, square feet. Uh, it faces Cohasset Harbor. It is a vacant piece of land and uh, it has a coastal bank in the rear. As you can see, there is a thick uh, green line. There is also a salt marsh at the toe of the bank. Uh, there is land subject to coastal storm flowage, which is located within the bank. And uh, the most restrictive of all of these resource areas is the coastal bank itself. Uh, it has a 50 and 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, this gray area over here is the area that is located outside of the 100 foot buffer zone altogether. Um, as I said, it is a, a vacant piece of land. Um, the soils are shallow to bedrock, and there are several areas of exposed uh, ledge outcrops. The topography slopes towards the rear, towards Cohasset Harbor. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crowley are proposing to develop this piece of property as a single family home. Um, they are proposing to uh, build a house with an attached garage served by a new gravel driveway. Uh, there is an existing, um, not existing sorry, there is a proposed existing system that was approved uh, previously. And uh, when we were trying to locate the house, we were trying to locate it um, as far away as possible from the approved septic system while still uh, trying to respect the building setbacks and also keeping the, the proposed dwelling as far away from the coastal bank as possible. Uh, the corner of the proposed dwelling that is closest to the coastal bank is at about a distance of 63.6 feet. 63, yes. Um, there is no work whatsoever proposed within the 50-foot buffer zone. Uh, however, there will be um, the, the entire proposed attached garage as well as about half of the house will be located between the 50 and the 100-foot buffer zones. 
uh, the driveway is proposed outside the hundred altogether. Um, as uh, with lot two, uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was uh, an emergency vehicle turnaround yeah. that was required by the fire department. Um, and we are, we're showing the, the same proposed uh, emergency vehicle turnaround in this plan, even though it was approved for lot two, uh, because this was a condition to, for a, to actually obtain a building permit. And we would like either one of the lots to be able to pull a building permit without having to wait for the other to build that emergency vehicle turnaround. So we would like to have this approved also as part of this filing. Um, there, uh, we're proposing a large area of uh, oscillation uh, barriers as, as well. It will consist of a silt truck, and it will uh, pretty much, uh, at least by the house, be all along the fiscal buffer zone. Um, this will require uh, also the utilities. Uh, previously for lot two, the utilities went to about this, you know, this extent. They will be pulled all the way along Glades Road in order to serve this house as well with a proposed hydrant at the end. And uh, there will be some proposed grading um, as well. Um, there, uh, as part of this, as part of this filing, uh, the potential buyers are proposing an area of about 1,800 square feet of native buffer plantings. Uh, be because we're proposing a gravel driveway, we've located the native buffer plantings along uh, Glaze Road, which is paved and the emergency vehicle turnaround. Uh, because this area is um, this way, any runoff from the pavement will get cleansed prior to going to, to the coastal bank. Uh, this, the, any, any runoff that falls on the gravel driveway will get cleansed through the gravel. But it's also great, uh, this, the contours here are graded so that this runoff also goes to a new uh, rain garden, has a pro an approximate area of 250 square feet. Uh, prior to the run of going towards the coastal bank. And uh, I believe that if there are any questions at this moment, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, so you have the emergency turnaround. You want, didn't, didn't we approve it in the last one? You did. But you don't, whoever builds first is going to make sure that's in. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, and um, I don't know, I'd like to see a little more mitigation. Well, we, we're taking a look at the site. Um, as you know, there are, you know, there are fine things there already, yeah. yes. a piece of land. There are phragmites at the bottom of the, of the bank. Um, we thought that might be some mitigation that could be done. However, being at the bottom of the bank where the salt marsh is, it's kind of inaccessible. Um, this uh, could be, this is a grass swale right here. Uh, maybe some more mitigation plantings could be you know, shown in that area. Todd? Where you're proposing the rain garden on the top, right that's only, that's the one rain garden. On the top part, it's, it's currently vegetated in its natural state. It is, however, the utilities will have to go through here. And instead of just vegetating it with, with lawn, we, would, we were thinking about vegetating it with native buffer plantings. Also, this area will be disturbed because of the emergency vehicle Turn turnaround. Around. So we thought we might as well vegetate it with, with native buffer plantings. And yes, you're correct. What's, what would be the point of vegetating something that already has native plantings? But that will be disturbed. Scott. Scott. This one's a simpler one than most of the other ones you normally bring to us. Uh, um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Somebody has to do them. All right. Um, approximately how many square feet is the um, uh, uh, is the structure going to be? The structure? Yeah. You know, I mean, not the whole structure, just the, on the ground level. Yeah. You know, how much? Of, um, how much? Oh. It may be in the thing. I just didn't. Usually it's marked on the plan somewhere to give me some idea, and maybe I missed it. Well, um, as far as the footprint of the house is concerned. And the garage, yeah. Okay, so all of the, the, the proposed structure, the area that is not over ledge is about 1,450 square feet. The entire area, that is what is not over ledge. 
and the entire area of the house, uh, let me see, with, within the 100 foot buffer zone is about 3,140 square feet. Huge. That's the yeah. Yeah. portion of the house as well as the garage. So everything in yellow is within the 100 foot buffer zone. And then the other 1,000 is over the ledge, or is that included in that? No, um, that's over the ledge. No, that, what I said was about uh, 1,450 square feet is not over the ledge. So that would be like a, I mean, like so five the ledge, ledge is not vegetated. So exactly. the, uh, the 1,600 square feet of, of vegetated area will be disturbed within the exactly. 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 And then there's an additional yeah. space that's obviously non-jurisdictional. Um, in the front here, I know it's not quite jurisdictional, is that going to be grass and, uh, you know, regular lawn up and near the front entrances and around the It the would just, one? we were proposing to just have landscape, however, uh, Penny was suggesting maybe some more, you know, native uh, yeah. of plantings. It, it would make sense to have it somewhat close to the proposed driveway, I would think, um, unless you would be you would prefer to have something actually right next to the coastal bank, um, you know, whatever the board uh, yeah. would prefer. Yeah, whatever. Let's face it, your views to the harbor. Yeah. The views to the yeah. harbor, yeah, which is fine. So natural plantings at the front <coughs> of the driveway right. wouldn't be a big deal. And, um, yeah, and there's no potential for vista cutting in, in this thing? We're not proposing any. All right, I just want to make sure. We're not, so we'll have to come back at some other time. Uh, the, the siltation barrier indicates yeah. the limit of work as well. Yeah, and I assume the road is going to be, and the utilities is fill, uh, dig and fill on the same day and exactly. keep on going, same construction exactly. methodology as before. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, we don't have the issues of not being able to, or, Having, you still have a fair setback from the 50, buff, 50 foot buffer zone for this entire space. I saw Dick is going to run um, Any wells? Um, none, none that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> they are, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, neighbors are really far away, which is mm -hmm. great. Yeah, no wells. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to think about what's the adequate amount of... Um, of uh, plantings mitigations that goes with somewhere between 1,500 and 1,100 <coughs> square feet of of um, disturbance within the uh, within a jurisdictional area. All right, thank you. Paul, uh, up to the uh, buffer zone where you have the silt fence, is that going to be lawn, or are you going to leave that natural? What's the plan well, from the house? Well, so it will be disturbed. Um, the client uh, would like to see, you know, have some kind of backyard. Um, as, you know, everything in the 50 buffer zone is not going to be touched, so it will be just the way you see it, you know, wild with the bees coming from the ledge just as it is today. Uh, so they would like to see some kind of backyard, so they were thinking on back there. Okay. Uh, between the 50 and the 100? Yeah. Yes. That's Nothing disturbed within the 50. No. 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 Well, a little brainstorming in terms of the mitigation um, and the other project in Lot 2 adjacent to this, we did uh, request off site mitigation for work that was done between the 50 and the 100. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know this area well enough along the coastal bank to know if there's any disturbed areas. We did have a discussion. In we're not aware if you disturbed the areas except for the frag mining area you just mentioned. Yes, and I, I um, John Zimmer was our wetland scientist, and I consulted with him uh, to see if there were on any other areas of mitigation that we could offer. Um, anything fully re degraded, and he didn't really see anything that was actually degraded, you know, within the 50 foot. I mean, we could always add more plantings, but uh, true mitigation could come from removing the frag mining, but again, being at the bottom of the coastal bank, uh, it would be extremely difficult, and just you know, uh, removing fragmites and keep them keeping them away is also a challenge. Where is the fragmite? Where are it's they? It's within the, the salt marsh at the bottom of the bank. 
Um, well, in, in terms of consistency with the prior pro adjacent project, I was thinking that the, I believe the adjacent property, I think they agreed to do mitigation of the public parking area on Bay, the Bailey's Causeway to assist the town DPW in uh, improving the drainage uh, around the parking lot. Now I'm thinking that um, if they're going to improve the drainage, perhaps there could be some salt tolerant plantings um, around the drainage structures at Bailey's Causeway as a public benefit. Well, that was also another you know, another type of project altogether. There was so much more work within the buffer zones than this one. In this case, it, well, in that case, the entire house was within the buffer zone. And also the driveway was within the buffer zone. Uh, in this case, actually, most of the work is outside as far as, you know, driveway, which is where the vehicles will go, as well as part of the structure. Uh, so <coughs> I don't, if, at least in my opinion, it's not, so lesser mitigation may be in order. Well, Put mitigation well, in any way. I think I think proper planning as opposed to participating in a drainage, I think it would be more expensive. Proper planting I think would be less expensive. So just thinking in terms of fifteen hundred square feet of removal of vegetation from the between the fifteen and hundred. Mm -hmm. so I'm just I'm just going out to yeah. salt tolerant planting, which I think would be relatively Yeah. We can decide that. Plus, we can see it. He's talking about it. <laughs> he just mentioned John Zimmer's already looked at this property. A lot wanted to look and see if there are any other areas that could use, you know, enhanced when it comes into graded. And yes, it seems to be coming back now. But I think what he's saying is that this other project that the other lot was involved with just, you know, because we're not talking about a lot of planting, mm -hmm. but he would be credited for that. Mm -hmm. Since we really don't have the areas here to do because John Zimmer's already looked. Yes, and if this was looking at the lot the way it is, it's it today, uh, of course, you know, this would have, again, some, maybe some areas in the front where some native buffer plantings could be, mm -hmm. you know, included, but uh, if it were not something very extensive, if it were, were you know, something proportional to this, I'm sure my client would be involved in Yeah, with well, that's all we're plans. looking at. Well, one question is the mm -hmm. This? Yeah. The and I think that came up Is that been reviewed by like the uh, fire department? Yes, actually I did meet with the fire department that it was my hope to try to combine the turnaround with the with the driveway uh, to try to minimize the impact, you know, and the work within the buffer at all, you know, altogether. Um, but unfortunately they would like to see a separate turnaround from the proposed driveway. So the answer was no, you have to keep it the way it was. Can, can we get a letter from them to sort of file that? What they want to put that? Yeah, because we're we approving the plan of the term on, we can have a letter saying that and then such and such a date has you know, approved turnaround that they're talking about. Um, actually, uh, as part of this package, I included the, uh, I'd be happy to leave this too, but it's, it's in, in all of the notices of intent. It's a copy of the approved uh, subdivision plan. Mm -hmm. And here is, the, this is exactly that turnaround that was shown over there. And it was uh, yeah, from the yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. what I'm showing there. Who can Um, just we could probably clear up the fire department one fairly quickly. The deputy chiefs. Um. I did sit on this uh, John Murphy the fire department with the chief. Um, we did require a separate turnaround for the fact that if they have some of people down at a party, the driveway still is no turnaround. 
So we did prove the one just past the driveway on the left hand side that um, if they put a proper turnaround, we can get it out. We want it signed to the turnaround emergency access only and turnaround only, not for not to be used for basic additional power. But it was approved by the fire department chief and I. Thank you, Joe. Um, did, did either one of you guys review this on the stormwater end? Have you had an opportunity to? We, I just, I'm going to actually, I reviewed at the report right before the hearing tonight. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, you might want to just address it. Sure. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I should have done that at my presentation. Uh, this, because it is new construction, it automatically requires a stormwater permit. Um, and as part of all of the, um, all of the, requirements for any stormwater permit. Uh, the most important areas as far as uh, uh, single family development is CSS removal, uh, which is water quality, as well as increase of runoff. So increase of heat as well as volume of runoff. Whenever uh, we are dealing with a coastal environment, uh, peak rate as well as volume uh, does not have to be matched from proposed to reconstruction conditions. Uh, and as far as water quality, TSS removal, uh, what the, the um, in this case it would be like the rain garden and the native buffer plant things, they have to uh, treat however much is uh, impervious that is used for vehicular um, access but, or, or for parking lots, uh, roof runoff because it is clean, it doesn't need to be treated. Because the gravel driveway is, uh, is you know, gravel, this uh, requirement did not have to be met. However, uh, we are already proposing some um, low impact development techniques as well, uh, which it consists of the, the rain garden as well as the native buffer plantings. Um, another thing that is required as part of the stormer permit is recharge. Because of the shallow to bedrock soils and the, the bedrock that's encountered in this lot, uh, the, let me see, I do have a, a volume of recharge that is required. Um, actually, under these conditions, it's either this volume of, of recharge or whatever uh, the maximum extent practicable. And recharge is actually calculated taking a look at everything that is proposed to be impervious. So the required volume that has to be recharged is about 21 cubic feet. The rain garden alone offers over 300 cubic feet of uh, volume. So every requirement has been met for the stormwater plant. Okay. I, you, can I Go just ahead. say one sure. in terms of the 50 foot buffer with the the lawn going up to it I think that's what the proposal is yeah. um, I feel there needs to be some sort of marking a fence or planting something to delineate the 50 from the lawn so that the lawn doesn't keep getting bigger okay. sure. it's easy enough mm -hmm. keep them from falling off the cliff too yes. <laughs> so are you saying that the lawn will be everything inside the the uh they haven't they haven't hired a landscaper yet so they don't know exactly that it will not be all lawn it will be also landscape guides however it's not native buffer planting but it's all inside the 100. Mm -hmm. it's it's outside the 50 between the 50 and the 100 and mm -hmm. also outside the 100 altogether you know whatever areas of green so maybe we should get a landscape plan if it's in that buffer zone. In the 100 foot buffer zone? Mm -hmm. Prior, something that you could submit that we would be able to review sure. um, when they've developed that. So is, would this be, I thought uh, you were going to consider maybe some more native buffer plantings. I don't know if that, you know. Well, I, 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 we're considering you're gonna, I, I just wanna make sure who's gonna propose that. In other words, everything, there's a all the work is inside the or a lot of it's in the 100 foot buffer mm -hmm. so 
and you not you don't really have a plan for what you're going to do with that yet in that buffer zone, right? Um, not as far as lawn and landscape. Right. No. Okay. Native buffer planting, the 1800 plus the 200. Yeah. So I think it would be. I think we should be able to have a look at what you're going to do for the landscape plan in that 100 foot foot buffer. Right. Uh, just at minimum, minimum, at least know a delineation of where the the edges of the landscaping is going to be within that 50 because you got so you, want to see you got wide areas going, especially north. You got an awful lot of area that you could work up behind the other thing, you know, which could be another thousand square, two thousand square feet of lawn up in the north. I don't know if you want to go that far. I mean, I and I'm just yeah. I mean, typically anything you want to do, you, you typically want to have in the filing at the time that you're doing it. So right now, there's nothing on this that show that shows landscape a landscape. Versus lawn. I, unless I'm missing something, is mm -hmm. that? No, we don't have any landscape that's shown. Okay. We just see a mixture of landscape beds and lawn, you know, whatever. Okay, but that doesn't even say that here, I don't think, does it? No. Or, um, I don't know if uh, this could be maybe something that you could incorporate your, you know, any kind of condition on the buffer plantings and where to locate them. And then we can, you know, develop a landscape and mitigation plan together. Um, what do you think? Do you want, would you be comfortable with a condition that they submitted a, a landscape plan subject to your Review and approval. I was listening to the all the comments from the commission that if we go back just to the mitigated plant base, there's still some, some issues hanging out there. In this case, the, the landscape architect uh, that's going to be working just on the lawn area, I'm going to call it the, mm -hmm. the big lawn. Um, yeah. Since he's, he, he hasn't been involved so far in the plan, but then, you know, you've got some of the plantings on there that we were talking mm -hmm. about. If we were to continue, can we get the land, uh, landscape plan shown in the lawn area, the beds they propose, and exactly what he's doing, and then possibly adding in the information? Um, what I would like to be able to do is put one final landscape slash mitigation planting plan for you. Um, so maybe if I could get some direction as to what kind of mitigation you're looking for, um, we could incorporate it all within one plan. I would just hate to come with one plan and then have, you know, more changes to make. Right. You know, um, that's why I was thinking if it could be subject to, then you could have, you know, a condition as to, I don't know, however more square feet of mitigation that you require and would be subject to the approval of the agent prior to, you know, being able to go for the open permit. You know, one of the problems I have is I don't know the, uh, the approximate area that you're planning to landscape. I mean, even, I mean, I don't, right now I don't care if we put beds or lawn or anything, but I just, if, if we assume an area is going to be grass, at least we should know a pro the, 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 the boundary of the landscaping that's going to be done because under the worst case scenario probably would end up grass and nobody ever gets around to putting in any bushes or anything else or they die and somebody just makes it grass but you know is it going to be 10 foot around the house or is it going to go all the way to the 50 foot buffer is it going to extend north all the way all the way to the Northwest corner, you know, the north mm -hmm. corner there. I, I well, assume you're going to do something is, has to go over the, something has to go over the uh, septic, the septic field system, because yes. that can't be, that has to be maintained in yeah. some manner. So, I mean, right now, I would see maybe just, just a quick look based on the size of the house. There's six or 8,000 square feet of lawn that would, that's outside the 50 zone. That's an awful lot of area that's going to be changed from a native state to a non-native state. But, 
Well, a couple of things could happen with the landscape plan. I mean, you could have a proposed one, and if you wanted to make changes, to, I know it's difficult to do that. You're building a house, and the topography and the ledge and all that stuff can get altered as you're building the house, and some of it's not even really clear until you have the house there. So if there was some sort of proposed plan, then you could always come back to the commission for an amendment mm -hmm. to, to alter that, if that were the case. Okay. Or, so you could just submit something now that's kind of generic. Mm -hmm. Or we can have it in the orders that it's, it's subject to review by the agent. The only thing is, I'm, I'm not sure. What I, I, I kind of heard that you wanted more mitigation, so I don't think it's just a landscape plan. Okay. It might be a landscape and mitigation plan. So, do you want us to write that into the orders, or do you I, want? I think I would prefer if you wrote, wrote it into the order, and then okay. my client would okay. have to abide by it and then provide it with a plan, you know, subject to the landscape plan okay. before they put the landscape in. Okay. I'm all right with that. All right, so that may be part of the orders. Yeah. Some mitigation yeah. and a landscape plan to be yeah. approved. Yeah, then we'll just All right. look at the worst case scenario for mitigation. Okay. Go from there. The audience. You know, I mean, you, you have the option now of, of building some of that into the landscape if you want to, I guess, if you, if you wanted to do that. But as far as areas are concerned, you, you might have a number, you know, at your next year when you discuss might have a number in mind or might have a number that, you know. Okay. And also maybe location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about the audience? Is there anybody? Um, yes, sir. My name is John Coleman. I'm at 163 Glade. I'm curious to know whether or not what you're looking at is the same plan that is on file at the gun across the hall that's been on file for public inspection. Is there a plan available that shows, other than the coastal bank, where the property line actually lies um, that's available for public display? Because the, nobody in this building was able to point it out to me. Um, it is in that same plan. I'm sorry. Pardon. No, that's all right. Uh, it, is, it is in that same plan. They don't know. And as far as so the, the property line comes from this, <coughs> and it goes around the back. And you're saying that that is a survey definite property line where you abut my property? Uh, if that is your property, yes. Okay. And, and another question is how much of that ledge that's up there is going to need to be blasted? Um, where, where the house will go. That is enough for a view. About behind it where the cliff is where it's a 50, 60 foot drop down to the marsh. Down here? Any of that going to be having to be blown up? No, no, because no work. And, and I, I apologize. I should be going through, through you. That's okay. I, I just, if you want to, so, I, Mr. Coleman, your house is the like the southernmost. One sixty-three. Twenty-three acres behind the house, including the house on, on this side of Glades Road that backs up to that piece of property right there, and. <coughs> Nobody in the building was able to show me where the property line was. Well, I, I, can you show Mr. Coleman where his property line, where? I, I can't see it from here, but is it possible for me to get a copy of that? Um, it, is, it is in the office, and actually there is a label on it that says Glades Road Road Access Road. But maybe you could show him, like, where his home, I'm assuming, is in this um, southern. It would be this one. <coughs> there, yeah. okay. And what's the other building that's, yeah. And I'm sorry, you have to say, state your name. Is oh, sorry. Sure, Us and it butts this thing all the way out to what is an existing old road that's out there. 
Okay. It's just not marked anywhere. And I want to make sure that if there's going to be any impact on that, that I know about it before it gets done. Okay. I wasn't able to determine it, nor was anybody able to show me where it was. So. Well, it looks like the proposed work is all within that buffer area. So there's nothing that's out along the edge of the property line that, that I'm seeing here. No. Anything in terms of the height, is there anything that's going to be the marsh is at one level, that piece of property is up maybe 50 feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything over the hill, any impact there, or is that all included inside the buffer zone? I'm not sure I'm clear on your question. When you go to the edge of the property line, does it include where it drops off down to the marsh, or is it ending at the top of that hill? Um, I believe you stated that uh, the property line is mostly within the marsh is what you stated in the yes. beginning of the hearing. Yes. That's so, what the contours would indicate. Yeah. The the edge of the marsh is 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 delineated on here with long dashes thick dashes mm -hmm. and the property line is shown mostly be slightly beyond that. Yes. Is the the uh, marsh line you're talking about the same thing as referred to as a coastal bank? No. no. Mm -hmm. That's a different line. The coastal bank is actually further inland than the marsh line. And then nothing is proposed within 50 feet off that top of the coastal bank. Uh, and I, I'm, as far as height is concerned, I'm not, I don't quite understand, but um, the building has to abide by the building requirements on the maximum height, you know, allowed. Uh, I'm not really code. worried about how high the building goes. I'm more concerned with impact that those rocks and trees and things that are along the side that, that, are, that are, are the the buffer between the two pieces of property. May may I try to ask that question differently? Um, Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard you say that there was going to be no disturbance in the fifty foot buffer. Is that correct? Yes. That would indicate that all along there would be no disturbance. Now I'm going to ask another question, um, which your question brought to my mind. Um, there is ledge under the house. There is also ledge within the within the hundred feet between the hundred and the fifty. Mm -hmm. um, are you planning on doing any blasting outside the confines of the house? Outside the confines of the house. We're trying to work with the existing contours. Um, I was hoping I think, the answer was no. Well, if it's your preference, sometimes it is preferred to have blasting rather than chipping because chipping takes longer and it's so much louder. Um, but if that is, again, something that you would rather see, absolutely. I guess the question would be more, are you altering the ledge outside of the parameters of the house? So are you, are you altering yes. the ledge in the? Yes, some of it. Um, for example, here, uh, we're proposing a contour 21, so the ledge would be altered by maybe a foot, maybe two. It could be chipped. Um, well, I'm not, we're not, I, don't, I, I don't think that's the question, it's the method. It's, it's, and that was sort of the question with the landscape question. Right, we what, don't have a plan for the What work. are you altering in the 100-foot buffer? Mm -hmm. And that was the question for the landscaping. Mm -hmm. So you are altering this land between the house and the 50-foot line? Yes, absolutely. We but does that show that anywhere? Contours. Does that say that on the plan here? Uh, we're proposing contours. And then, of course, there might be some blasting or whatever in the in the yeah, roadway, and also in the roadway for a water line and things like that. If yes, if, if again, <coughs> ledges encountered, which you know, there's ledge everywhere. Right. Okay. 
well, okay from the the answer, but not necessarily okay from well, the commission. Well, I mean, there's still, they've got to get a water line in here, and they're proposing a buffer, you know, they're, they're doing hay bales and yeah. all that sort of thing to get it in there. But I still think it, it's, the question is, what is this yard going to look like? Um, right. And, and whether we would approve, I mean, if, if they're going to, there's a, a ledge right out in the front of the house, for instance. Right. Uh, and I is, I'm assuming that that ledge is exposed. Well, it looks like just from her, this contour line, they're proposing a contour line of 21 through a piece of ledge that's at 23, so at least there's a couple of feet coming off the top of that ledge. You're proposing that 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 you would take a couple of feet off, yes. which we may not agree to. Okay. What is the purpose? I'm sorry. What is the purpose of removing that? Well, it is in this case, it is close to you know it's close to the house. Uh, there is only right now a small piece of, uh, for example, there has to be some removal for that septic tank. Um, so the the ledge there will be cheap, chipped. Also, we would like to keep water sloped away from the house, uh, and that is why we have, if you take a look at the contours, the, the drainage, everything is directed away from the foundation rather than towards the foundation. Having ledge there, and we just you know, need the ledge the way it is, uh, many parts, you know, rain that falls on that ledge, some of it will go, will be directed towards the foundation. That is something that we do not want to see. So the point of this is to try to break away from the foundation. Now, could there be, you know, less less grading, you know, over ledge? I'm sure we could, you know, change it slightly, but still we need to see grading away from the foundation. And unfortunately, there's ledge everywhere on the site. Okay. Did you get your answer as adequate? Yeah, if it's on file over there and I can come and look at it at my leisure, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. And I'll be back when the, the next plans are submitted, if I have any more questions. Um, okay, well, I don't know how many more plans are going to be submitted. I mean, this is a complete, What's that? with the exception of maybe a landscape <coughs> plan. Is there anybody else? Um, yeah. Jeff Delisi, I represent uh, uh, Jeffrey and Mary Ann Burek. We reside at 172 Glade Road. Um, Carmen's design a fairly nice plan. I just had a few questions. Uh, number one, as was implied by the comments, this is a sensitive area. Shown, uh, and as well as the board itself. And uh, even though that, you know, this delineation um, maybe a few years old, it has been renewed, and it is currently valid. Okay. And the second part of his question with regards to? The top of the coastal bank. The top of the coastal bank. In our bylaws. Well, again, it went through review, through your review, and through, through your okay. consultants. Can I ask a, a question? When we looked at this, um, with the w we had a, a review from the state, and they were going to get back to us. Were they going to were they going to comment at all on on that question? Um, um, well, they, they they will. I would assume once they make their final decision. However, they haven't they haven't yet made their final decision. Okay. Um, I mean, that was a question that was raised and brought to their attention. It was exactly the same question, yes. Right. But the question, we, we walked around the whole edge, so we were actually on this other side of the road, and that was a couple of the places that he pointed out, and the question was posed to, um, and I can't remember his name. Dan Gilmore. Dan Gilmore. About the question about whether there was any inconsistencies in this delineation. And I, I just don't recall that he's going to comment on that. The, that wasn't that wasn't the piece that he was brought to um, the site for, I believe. Well, his comment at the time uh, was that there is an existing ORAD, right. and that delineates the, the resource areas. Correct. So pretty much the point was moved. However, 
the you know Mr. Burek's uh, representative, Sen Engineers, uh, continue with that line of uh, of uh, argument. Right. Um, now, will Mr. Gilmore say anything about that in his letter? I I wouldn't know. He addressed it verbally. He might have something there in writing as well. However, since it is an existing order, again the appeal period for this is long gone. And, and I don't disagree with you. I mean, the whole purpose of having that done exactly. a, ahead of time is to. With the ORAD, as long as the ORAD is, is still alive and valid, that's what you go by. The day that expires, then it may open up a question for one of these lots that maybe didn't. Unless something's brought that's blatantly wrong with it. And, and then in that case, it can be readdressed. But I, I, I don't think that was. Correct. Okay. Um, is there anybody else? Steve? Yeah, if I could through the chair, I just wanted to try and answer and John's question. I know you're world renowned, I know you're world renowned, but you have to Steve Bjork on uh, the planning board actually did a form A plan on this, and I believe you'll find there's a meets and bounds copy of the plan at the DPW office right next door to this office here, which will be in all dimensions on the lot. And I think what he's what John's been referring to as far as the fifty foot buffer zone is not actually the fifty foot doesn't start at the bottom where the marsh is. The fifty feet is from the top of the coastal bank, so it's, a, it's a quite a distance back from the actual property line, the 50-foot non-disturbance zone that they're proposing. It's from where the ledge starts to flatten back out of the top. So we go 50 feet from there. So. Okay. Frankie, okay. I have real questions on uh, on what they're going to be doing um, to the ledge and, and one thing and another. And I, I think it would warrant, personally, I think it might warrant at least a um, preliminary yeah. landscape plan. Um, you know, I, I realize that those things can change, and, and we can certainly consider amending something like that. But I, I, I think. Given that it's all in the buffer okay. zone, we should have some idea of what they're. Now, um, what would you like to see in a landscape plan regarding mitigation? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. There's so much mitigation, but we would like to know what you plan to do. In other words, okay. it's it's really not our purview to direct you. How to, you have a sense of what we're looking for. You've talked to the agent, um, and yeah, I, I met with Jim right. Before. So, I think you need to give us a, a again a plan. You know, I, I don't really care whether they're roses or, okay. or whatever, but I think we need to know if there's plant beds and if there's grass and and that sort of thing. I think is a reasonable request. Can you make a suggestion that um, some of the commissioners up to make this site that yeah. was on? Are the corners of the house big? No, they aren't. It's a tough one, though, Paul, because, I mean, you could, it, it's so, it's, well, it's very difficult. Right. And, and, and I just had to deal with this and job in another town is even just so that some of them will then be you know, part of this decision, you can just even if they spray paint the corners, just to try to give them an idea where this is going in, they just look at it before the next, I, I would suggest we you know, and I would I would suggest though I, I think if 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 anybody has an interest in really figuring out where this house is, I mean I've walked out there, Jim's been there. Um, it it might be more beneficial to set up a time with someone from Cavanero and just say here's where the house is, because if if they try to go out there, mark out some stakes, and then some people wander to them, they're not going to be able to figure out where that house is. Yeah, and I'm too glad the other one. It was marked with stakes, and quite frankly, you went out there and you couldn't find the stakes mm -hmm. because they got overgrown really quickly and stuff. So, yeah, well, in the winter time, they were covered with snow. So, it, yeah. Well, why don't we um, why, why don't we see if we can figure that out between the agent and and somebody from your office can give a pretty good idea of where. It, it, I mean, I think it's pointless. To have every corner of that lot staked, that house staked out, um, the just a general idea of where that home is is would be adequate for people to make a decision. Oh, yeah. and that, I don't think they need to go through that expense or that work, quite honestly. But 
Um, I do think it's important to have a decent idea of what's going to go on around that site. In addition, if you know where the areas where you're going to blast, mm -hmm. just again, just a general, just a general idea. Because you're, you obviously know where you're going to blast because you told us. Mm -hmm. You know where the septic system's going. I said the house, the blasting area, the septic system. And, and that's right, just in a general sense. I mean, it, when you go in that road, it's, it's hard to determine exactly where that house is. Yeah. For the layperson to just walk in there and say, oh, geez, I think this house is going to be about here. Well, it's, it's again, because of all the vegetation, yeah. it's hard to pull any, <clears throat> excuse me, any ties. Right. So really, it would be best for us, actually, to have maybe the major, you know, maybe four and then the... You know, if there were marks on the road and you could say it's going to be in 50 feet and it's going to be about here and, and we can see in there or something. But, but yes, we would be glad um, to do that. I apologize, I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, uh, we would probably just take the major corners of the house and then walk it with you. Uh, if you want to see the septic system also, we would have to stake that out, but we'd be happy to meet you there. I think a general yeah. idea of where things are would be helpful. And mm -hmm. yep. How quickly could this site disappear? Could we... Um, Tomorrow. <laughs> no, tomorrow. No, it's yeah. going to rain. <laughs> 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 oh, it's <laughs> raining. Why don't you get a couple of options and shoot them to Carol or Jim and uh, see if we can set that up. Okay? So, why don't, do, you, do we want to continue this for a, a, a two week two period? Weeks. Is that enough? I think or? two weeks. Two weeks would be great. Yeah. Just to and I'll try to set up a site at the same time next week. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to... And then, can I just... Yeah, go ahead. If, Mr. Coleman, if you want to check with the office, if it's helpful for you to check with the office and, and know when that is, if, if you have any interest or anybody else in the audience wants to see where that is, they could check with, with the office as well. I'll, I'll know if the cards go by. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. I, go ahead. Um, I make a motion to continue Crowley, Lot 1, Glades Road to August 29th at 640. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ferguson, 57 Kingsway, Addition Driveway and Sidewalk. Yeah. On August 15, 2011, at 7.20 p.m., the Town Hall Citral Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citral Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Linda Ferguson for porch, deck, additions and driveway and sidewalk reconstruction on property located at 57 Kingsway situate. Our butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Uh, Richard Morgan. Um, I've got uh, two items that I'd like to give has been approved by the Board of Health. Jennifer has no problems. Uh, we get the addition to the rear. Uh, we're away from the, uh, the buffer zone to most of the portion of the property other than the left-hand side of the addition, which is a small triangle. Yes, they were. I believe. Yes, sir. We may approve that. 
Yeah, green green cards, cards are uh, certificates from the post office. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. Um, I believe it, it was done. Typically, when you come in for a hearing, you'd have the green cards yes. from the post office um, and give those to secretary um, or a certificate from the post office that those things were advertised. Um, can we continue that, or do we have to they have to re-advertise? Usually we re-advertise. Yeah, we shouldn't have opened. We did that. We, did that we haven't opened it though, have we? Well, I read the yeah. oh, did. piece. Um, I think we got to consider it not open because remember what happened that the other night when we had one we didn't open the next guy we won. We didn't open. We're best off if it's not open. He, he just asked if he could continue. Yeah, I think. I, I saw it, but, yeah, you know, right. without the green cards, we're not going to go right. forward. No, well, I guess I'm in. Okay, I make a motion to continue yeah. 57 Kings Ferguson to August 29th at 6.45. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> See if you can track down Mr. Crawford and tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. Could you bring those in to uh, the office? Yes. Please. Okay. Thank you. People weren't watching that. Um show cause hearing for mass pavement reclamation. <coughs> Excuse me. Seventeen nineteen Edward Foster Road. Just for the record, your names? Donald Giacomo. I'm in Pellet. And, and you're with? <laughs> Mass Paper Reclamation. Okay. D-I-G-I-A-C-O-M-I. Um, I'm Mike Dillon, D-A-L-L-I-N-T, Mass Paper Reclamation. You know what I'd like to do is let Jim can you field that? Okay. So what 
Um, yeah. I'm confused. Go ahead. One well, confused because the next thing is the amendment, the uh, modification to the proof plan. The proof. I'm not quite sure. Are they just here? Yes, that we met met with out there. So we wanted to know why we want we wanted we wanted to ask we wanted to ask the, the firm that put the fill in the salt. Okay. In, in the case of a show cause hearing, what the the, uh, the goal is or the objective of a show cause hearing is sort of to hear from all parties involved and determine where things went on. We had a show cause hearing for this site a, a while back. Yeah, However, right. Mass Pavement was not included in that show cause hearing, okay. which they should have been. All right. So okay. we're just kind of catching up here. Well, and, and I think it gives them the opportunity to present their um, object, you know, their view of the situation as well. The show cause that we had before was given to the area. Right. Um, I called, we, we called them in because they were basically the overseers of the project, thinking that they should have been on site monitoring the project. Right. But they weren't going to physically visit the building. It was sort of an oversight that we didn't bring in all, all three at the same time. Okay. All right. All right. I thought this was something new. No, That's no, all. Th this is the old. Okay. So, do you have any? particular questions? Well, um, <laughs> I don't know if questions a statement. I'd, I'd like to fill out of there. It doesn't belong there. And um, see it planted properly with salt tolerant plants. And that's my, I mean, I'm not going to point fingers anymore. Somebody m messed up. You had plans that we didn't have. You know, you thought you were doing right, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they had they no way were they what we approved. So should we just explain? Yeah, why don't you jump in? Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, obviously we were provided a, a set of plans to bid on a project by the town situation. We bid on that project, we awarded the project, and then we're invited to a pre-construction meeting, which brought up how we were to approach the project, and then we were given a notice to proceed. Um, we excavated, there was, there was fill there on that slope leading down to the salt marsh area. We excavated for the plan that fill that was there. There's been dumping over the years. I don't know, we hadn't been there prior, obviously. Um, we excavated that out to the limits that were on the plan we were provided, and installed loam, again, according to the plans that we were provided, and later found out that those plans had not been properly approved. Um, but to our knowledge, they had been. We had no reason to believe that they hadn't been approved. You know, when we receive a, a bid package from the municipality, you know, it's our assumption that everything has been gone through the proper channels before they put it out of bid. Um, so, you know, obviously whatever needs to be rectified will find out what that needs to be and, and approach that from here. Um, but as far as we knew, we were doing what was asked of us on the plans. Question. Are you, are you saying that the plans that you used were the ones that you were given at the pre-construction meeting and those were the only plans you used from that point on? Correct. Okay, so something happened the pre-construction meeting back Correct. Okay. that has nothing plans. prior to your getting involved yeah. so okay yeah. we weren't at yeah correct i understand that. Okay. i understand all that I'm, yeah no from our previous meeting i'm trying to get and the yeah. sequence of we events provide the invitation to the pre-construction meeting we were also an invitee so i don't know <laughs> who we're supposed to be invited yeah right yeah. <laughs> i have uh, Todd, do you have some? No, I'm just so the tip tibbets gave you the plans. Well, actually, yeah, they, that's what the provider yeah, they were designing uh, and that's where they came from. Go ahead, Scott. Um, have you had experience working on projects in this type of resource area before? Um, no, not direct, not directly on, on the ocean, in the ocean. I mean, you know, right here, you're, you're right at high tide mark, so. 
mean, you know, we worked around it within, you know, buffer zones, you know, frequently and but you know in situ Um we did the bike path, we did the first phase of the bike path. Um so we would have had, you know, we went by the boat ramp over there and we had all kinds of, you know, soap fence and, and stuff all along that area. It was one of our projects. Um we've done a lot of roads, parking lots and stuff around town over the years, so yeah. So in six we were you didn't find it odd that there wasn't a order of conditions and a DP number to work on or any of that other stuff working there? You didn't have any red flags come up? Because every other job would have had a DP sign and number on the job and an order of conditions on site, which required by the order of conditions on them. So. I, I'm kind of lost why you didn't have a red flag that this stuff wasn't there. Um, I guess just an oversight on our part. I mean, many things going on, and you know, in the beginning of the season, and just one of those things that you know you don't do every single day, and you know, we just something that doesn't happen for us every single job. So I guess that would be why well, we, I am we missed it. So you didn't, you didn't notice you didn't notice that there were no orders or conditions. You didn't, there was no meeting with the Conservation Commission, a representative of any way, shape, or form in free construction? No. Did that happen when you did the driftway? Um, you would have remembered I mean, I, Vinny. I, I, I don't remember that there was one. There could have been one, but if you ask me if I specifically remember that, no, I don't. There is a DEP number on that project, is there not? Um, yeah, but there was no sign. Right. There's not, so there is no sign? We provided a sign for that. Right, there was no sign on the There is still no sign at the project, which I um, right, I, I, um, With the silt bench, oh, actually, one of my questions is, did you have weekly meetings with Tibbetts? No. Now that, I, I have the project manual here. Yeah. Requires a weekly mini meeting with minutes read by each other and uh, approved by each member that they're correct. So there are no minutes, no meetings, no nothing. You just worked on without any, without any direction then basically. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We met with uh, George, yeah. the, uh, the town inspector who was also overseeing. The, Dan, uh, the maybe Dan. Dan. Dan Smith. Dan Smith. Dan Smith. And we met him a couple of times at the beginning of the project. And few times throughout the project. But you so never met anybody from Tibbetts? One, there was one visit from a gentleman, you know, a couple of weeks into the project. I don't recall his name, but... I'm, I'm just trying it. to understand some of the sequence of events. Yep. Yep. Um, and it never occurred to you to do a request for information why the silt fence wasn't even touching the ground. I can understand. I read the stick. You couldn't install it as they, ins they said to dig a six-inch trench and bury it and and you couldn't dig in the salt march. I mean, that was impractical. So you couldn't physically put the thing in correctly. And if you couldn't put it in cor incorrectly, why didn't you ask for, ha ask the engineer, request for information, what you're supposed to do with this thing because you weren't following putting the salt marsh in? I mean, you never, that, that should have been a red flag in your end. And I'm not, I'm not sure why, why you, you didn't ask for, you know, ask for direction because it seems like a pretty obvious thing that the first thing you got to do on site, you can't physically do. I mean, you know, in the future, I think you'll, you'll understand that you're going to ask for a copy of the orders condition, you're going to make sure there's a DB number and stuff. I mean, but, uh, so, because I, I know you don't want to come back here or have to deal with any of the other towns, which I think use pretty much the same procedures on most of the projects. And especially once you see water somewhere near your project. All right, I just was trying to, to get some of the sequence and understand what was going on, thanks. I have a question for you, Jim. Um, where, where's this at now with the, the plans we approved and the plans they had and? That's, that's, that's next. That's next. That's next. That's Okay. Nicely dodged. 
Tony? And I've asked mine. Kim? I just have, I just have one comment for you. In, in Massachusetts, no salt mark is allowed to be impaired, destroyed, killed, period. So whenever you have plans, it shows. And, and I think what you told me was they measured from the plan. They measured from the plan, brought them out into salt mark. <laughs> can't fill or alter a TSL mark without going through the variance process. So whenever you run into this, this again, and you measure from the plan, and you're going to impact salt mark, the red flag goes up. So did you go through a like, higher process of getting the variance from the state? It's a long, drawn-out process. One of the most protected resources in Massachusetts. So that's what I'm thinking about. Can I just, I, and I might have missed something when we went through this scenario, but so after you awarded the job, you met on the site with somebody. You had a set of plans. Uh, no, Actually, pre-construction. Pre right here in town hall with, with, uh, with the flag group. So then you went out to the site. Then from there, we proceeded to the site. That and there was some control or some markings or something? Yeah, like we, yeah we provided our control. And uh, you know, when we offset from that, color slope, still fence from the color slope. Well, was no so you did that or the engineers no, did, we did it? That. We, we did that. From by us. Okay, so you laid that out, and then you, from that, set up your silt fence yep. and toe slope, and, and work up from that. Okay. Well, I guess that's the last piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So. One, one last thing about the silt fence, or a straw bales, or silt on they're installed There's not one in here. There isn't a mention of the of the Wetlands Protection Act, town bylaws, or anything that has to do. The only place you know that it's there, they mention a the coastal bank. Is that you take on a project like that, typically the order of conditions are actually part of the documents yeah. you get to yeah. do it. Yeah. And in the order of conditions, right on the first page, usually. It gives you the, the site plan that's approved by the Conservation Commission and it'll give you the date on it. And right there would have been almost a red flag up a red flag. We have one date here on this plan um, in, in a, from, from CLE engineering, which is, I guess the previous engineer, and then you got the tickets for it. So right there would have been enough information to look at conditions with this. So. Right. Jim, are you are they clear what needs to be done on that slope to to move forward? I mean, do, are we clear on what we want to have happen? Uh, I, I think we may be, but we'll hear that from Tim and the LEC when they come up. I, I believe we let's see. If, let's see if the consultants are clear. We did have discussions. We, we have a we're, we're waiting for the information. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. We've been asking for the information so that we can know what we need to do to proceed and. Hasn't been given any information at all. Yeah, we have. Yeah, no, we plan on it. We'll be able to do that. But we had LEC go out and calculate the square footage of Mark that was built to determine what the next step would be. We did have the architect and the wetlands specialist determine the next step of action. I want to make sure there's no reason. That's what they want. Right. Where, where uh, this is the original Okay. And not that it has anything to do with anything, but we did, uh, Mass Pavement did do the, uh, as he mentioned, the first phase of the walk on the bike path on the driftway, and, and we had, I felt, a very 
good working relationship with with Mass Pavement on that. Thank you. And uh, you know, it's just too. It is too bad. And I think it's well pointed out. If if you're even getting anywhere near something like that, obviously, you guys should be raising the question. I think long before you should be asking it, somebody should have been handing you a document. I would agree. Um, but by the same token, all parties involved, you wouldn't start building something that's unsafe, or you would use a short box or whatever, if if that were the case. And you wouldn't start that without knowing that it's okay. So a wetland's no different in our mind. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience for show cause? Anybody want to speak to that? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who normally calls the free construction meeting? Typically, the awarding authority, the town, the town would. would ask for that along with their engineer, and then we would be notified when that happens. Right. But it would be the awarding authority that calls the meeting. Right. Okay. Um, so at 730, let's see, amendment, uh, town of Situate slash Patterson, 117, 119 Glades Road, uh, modification to approve plan. Actually, we changed that to the presentation of phase three construction plans in the agenda that we voted on. Okay, so on August 8, 2011, at uh, 7.30, the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws, so it's not to amend the order. It's to present plan three, uh, to present phase three construction uh, plans. It's a request for an amended order. Okay. To amend the order conditions issued under DEP file number 68-2024 to the town of Situate Mark Patterson for modification to the approved plan, including but not limited to the walkway relocation, removal of viewing pier, and coastal bank grading and revegetation on property located at 117 and 119 Edward Foster Road. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Okay. Okay. Sure. You're up. Okay. Uh, my name is George Block. I'm Civic Engineering. And with me tonight is um, Susan Spratt, who is Project Manager for the Project for Pivots. And Stan Humphreys, who is um, uh, representing the LEC, was a, a fundraising consultant on, on the project. Okay. And you have I guess some green cards or right, notification. You want to give those to Carol, please? Just a second. If it rattles badly, we'll. Put a little there in. Again, it's stuck. Okay. Okay, we obviously had a number of issues and problems with this project, which we went over in great detail at the, the last meeting we were in here. Um, tonight we're here to uh, uh, correct some of that and to request uh, an amendment. Um, uh, our plans that we submitted to say are very close to the, uh, the original plans which were, were done by CLE. Um, we very, um, and, and certainly in concept, we're, we're very similar and we very, um, I would argue, not substantively, sub, not substantively in uh, a number of areas which um, we'll go through. Um, uh, the areas include um, the rehabilitated coastal bank. Um, the uh, alignment of the, uh, the location of the, of the walkway um, and the, the um, material of the walkway is constructed of, as well as the kayak launch area and a, a seating area south of the, um, of the Situate Maritime Building. All, all those vary somewhat from the original plan that the ceiling is um, I'd like to have Susan just go over with you um, what these changes entail so that you um, become familiar with. So the walkway, initially from CLE, it started in the same location. 
It came up roughly the same here, but at this location it diverged closer to the parking lot. Came up, was a buddy in this fence line, came over into the parking lot on this side, down through the, in front of the pump station, crossed the entrance like this, and it and ended generally in the area of this dune area. Um, what we've done is that we pushed it closer to the bank to give a buff, greater buffer area between the parking lot and the walkway to provide for more of a park type area that people are walking through, they're not right near the parking lot, conflicting with vehicles. Um, we actually it had continued up through this area. We found out there were some issues here, so we have pushed it back. It will end here in a little bulb type roundabout. And it comes through. Um, we moved it along this existing fence line because when we went out and did the survey of this parking lot, the, the swale that was shown on the CLE plan was constructed. You can see it here in this dark contour. Are there folks in the audience that would like to see this? Uh, let's see. Well, we have Jim move over here. And we, uh, if we put it on that right where Jim is, maybe we both, all of us could see. Yeah. It rooms a little difficult. Good idea, Scott. Maybe Kevin might want to come over on this side and. Can you push that right back to the, like with the, the seat, get the easel the right back to the wall? So if we use the area that CLE had shown the walkway to be, we would have been through that swale, which we did not want to do. And if we moved it on this side of the swale, we would be further into the parking area, taking out the parking from the ring park. So through meetings with the Water Waste Commission and discussions, we determined that the best location would be along this fence line. And basically along this fence line, it adds, it's actually a safer entrance at this for pedestrians. They're not crossing in front of this entrance at this location. So they kind of, they can walk down, um, and across the road, continue right along without having to cross the path of travel at the entrance. Um, another big change was there's the seating area here, um, south of the existing building. Um, at you know, meetings with the Water Waste Commission, they requested to kind of spruce up that area because it didn't seem very attractive to them. So what we're there for, we're proposing is to use the same type of special concrete paving that's out there now with the beach glass to carry this straight on down to this first, I guess we would call it, uh, the first ramp, slip ramp for the boats. And then we're removing some of that grip wrap and planting, you know, beach grass behind it and some other type of planting. And we're adding um, big granite type seating boulders at the bottom of the base of it. So they'll be providing additional seating here with additional plantings. And then we'll continue along down and use the same stone dust walkway that's there now to connect the area here. Um, the grading along the, the, the dune, or I should say bank, is just what CLE had. The limits of the fragmited removal is the same limits that CLE had on their plan. What we have incorporated is more salt tolerant plantings, and Stan can get into that in further detail. Um, suggestions from Jim of what to add down at the base through here, but there is extensive plantings that have been added opposed to what was shown on the CLE plan. They just stated salt tolerant plantings, but we went through and actually have a greater de definition of what we're proposing there. Um, grading wise, everything is graded to enter this existing swale and then come out through here into this little grass area and over sheet flow out over the walkway. Um, unfortunately now, since everything hasn't been graded properly, it looks like there's puddles and, you know, out there at the walkway. But this is all graded that there will be no puddling effect. Everything will gradually street flow over the walkway. Um, the, the paving material initially was 
um, I believe, um, gravel, compacted gravel walkway. Now it's a stabilized aggregate with some type of silica gel that's in it that will make it not as permeable as concrete, um, but not as um, loose as gravel. It's kind of that in between. Um, it was selected by our landscape architect to be ADA compliant, which gravel is not. In order to provide this type of air, you know, type of walkway, it needs to be ADA compliant, and that's what they have chosen. Um, she has in numerous emails, and I think in the correspondence that we have said to you that if you have any questions, to contact her directly because she has used it quite frequently on many other projects in the state. Sandy, you want to talk about the plantings that we added? Sure. sure. This is a revised version of the planting plan. It was submitted to uh, Tibbetts a while back. Thank and you. the reason we've made the modifications is working with staff. Um, you got this in mm -hmm. And they observe tidal changes, particularly between mean high and um, spring high. Uh, we wanted to improve the square footage, increase that of uh, the Spartina Paytons at a higher elevation, and also Spartina Altina Flora at a lower elevation. Mm -hmm. So there's about 5,400 square feet of salt marsh plantings with, that, with those two being combined. Um, shown in this diagram seaward of the existing silt fence and hay bale line, as well as landward and on the slope. Um, also with some uh, seaside goldenrod. And I think the other questions that were asked um, pertain to the uh, amount of fill. Um, we through subgations at mainly the southwest corner, we had determined that about 100 square, 100 square feet of fill up to about six inches, which we think was the lone place on the slope after it was um, cleaned up or pulled off. There's actually some evidence that there may have been more material pulled off on the seaward side of the, of the marsh line, but that's hard to determine at this point. Um, there's not nearly as much Phragmites on the slope as one would have anticipated with the alterations. And it was, as, as uh, Susan indicated, um, grading plan was identical to the CLE. Okay. Thank you. We go to some questions. Anything else sure. you guys no, want to add? Nothing else to present. Question. Okay. Um, I know there were some questions of the walkway over on the fence, that line over there, that you would cut away an awful lot of soil there to put that walkway in there. Maybe it'd be helpful if you go back up and then we, you, you can sort of. It would be the northeast. This section here. No. Along the fence, right there. Um, actually, it's going to be when it's completed at grade with what's out there now. It looks like the cut yeah, is like yeah, this. Yes, they have to fill 12 inches of dense graded subbase. Sorry, eight inches, and then another four inches of that aggregate. There, are, we have done an as-built of what's been, there are two areas out there we've spoken with a contractor that have been excavated greater than what we have shown on our plans, but that's something that we can definitely work with them now to, you know, rectify that, get that back up to grade. But all this long here, everything will be at grade. So you're going to lift it back up? Well, that's it's, typically what you do is you remove any... You remove the unsuitable soil and put back suitable soil and they're going to put back eight inches of dense graded subbase and then four inches of that stabilized aggregate top soil. You call it like a top. So you, what you see out there is actually excavated a foot below, and then it gets built up a foot back. Okay. Go to the coastal bank side. You're sitting right on the bank, that walkway. 
right on the edge of the slope. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it should be away from the slope. It's right on the slope. Plus, personally, I don't like the material. I, I, if you didn't use the gravel, I would have much rather see you put a boardwalk out there where the water could definitely get through. Um, and of course the fill on the bank, I don't know, that's going to be kind of Jim's decision, but I think it needs to be, it hasn't been pulled out of there. Did we decide that that was not going to be removed, that it would be better to plant it as it exists, that it would be more damaging to try to remove any of that? Is that what we... Well, I didn't that's, heard, yeah. That's, that's my opinion, yes. I, because of the, because of the unauthorized full of salt mark, the only full of the salt mark, I think pulling, trying to pull that pull out, fill out, I think we probably would destroy more plants. And the proposal initially was to plant that area with salt, salt mark, not just salt power species, but the low hopping bank with the salt mark species. Okay. We have now um, discussed it and changed the, changed the species to the more appropriate species that will survive. So. But, so I think that leaving, in my opinion, is leaving the fill in place and planting it with the proper species of salt marsh grasses <coughs> is the best balance we can get out of it. Do you want to the fill just going to wash away? Uh, with the, with oh, it probably did today. So you may want to put uh, just a silt fence at the base of the fill so the plant roots take a hold. Is this the right time of year to do that? Well, why haven't they put a cover on it? It can be, but I think the fall can be better. The rest of the weeds and the dried mites first. Can a mat go be put on top of that loam now? Would that be beneficial? Or? Well, well, directly talking about putting an erosion mat on there, let's, let's talk about what's happened now. Just within the, the month or a month and a half, we've had an enforcement order stopping the project for the illegal, illegal unauthorized fill. You've seen the embankment, you've seen the vegetation that's pulled up on the embankment. The frag mining has come back. It's all basically weeds with frag mining in there now. And I don't know who's going to be responsible for an aggressive maintenance plan, but that was a suggestion from Kibbutz through LEC and the landscape architect that the town was going to have to come up with the, uh, with the uh, uh, frag mining maintenance plan, even after you have the salt flower plants in there, because I'm not convinced that they got all the roots of the Phragmites out initially. So I did ask, I did ask Tibbetts to pass it on to the wetlands consultant, to ask them whether or not the loam was, that they, whether or not they'd gone deep enough to remove the roots of the Phragmites, which was the initial reason for this whole advanced project. Or should they just leave the six inches of loam there and have the towns come up with an aggressive management plan to keep the right mites out of there after all these salt problems plants are put in. So uh, I think we need to discuss with the, with the landscape architect whether or not we want to leave the weed and the frag mining plants in there now or remove them and put a put an erosion mask down to keep the little the okay. into the market. I think maybe the erosion mask would maybe a better idea. Okay. When you say an, an aggressive maintenance plan, if we put salt tolerant plants in there, and I'm guessing you mean pesticides to, to control the, how, how do you control the Phragmites once you already plant the salt tolerant plants to hold the bank in place? I think we need to discuss that with the um, wetland consultant and the, and the landscape architect. You, you and I both know the difficulties of trying to eradicate or even manage Mighties and the disinfectant weed plants that are coming up now. Uh, it's too close to the water to use any type of pesticides or any type of chemicals. So I think we need to be creative and think about how, we, how the town's going to manage that. But I would not, 
I would not suggest going into that chemical room. And if we dig it up, though, which is the way you get rid of the big roots, you dig up the Phragmite roots. If we dig that up, then aren't we going to dig up the plantings that are supposed to be salt tolerant and well, they're protect? Not, they're, they're, not in there. they're not in there yet. So yeah. What I was saying is the, root, the roots of the Phragmite, if, if you go out there now, you can see the roots of the Phragmite. Some of the roots are 20, 25 feet long. You can see them along the northern part of the embankment. Well, they're going. The roots were not eliminated, which I don't know if, I don't know if that was part of the initial was to go deep enough to remove all those roots. But it was a fragmite eradication plant to begin with, and it didn't, it didn't work. So either it didn't properly, wasn't properly done, or fragmite is so aggressive it just came back in. It's something we need to work out, and I assume it's better. If you go in now and can uh, try to eradicate the fragmites and, and the weeds, you're going to expose the entire bank to the winter without anything to adhere uh, to, to, to keep the soil in place. And you're just going to lose it. It seems to me. Yeah. Right. So the alternative is... The alternative is to leave the... And, I, and again, I want to discuss it with the specialist, but to leave the plants in place when they're ready to do the actual plantings, the bank restoration plant. When they take all those plantings out, do what they were required to do initially that was not done, which is to immediately put an erosion, erosion control mat and then put the plants in. The erosion control mat will minimize the erosion of the embankment material. And do it mm -hmm. next year during the growing season. Well, this, this, this fall, actually, early this fall. October. Early this fall, probably September. Okay. September. Uh, we're going to start a couple other things that have never been presented to us. Um, along the road, there is a um, that dune restoration. Um, the exact restoration was never shown to us, and I, I don't understand why you would take out a uh, Rosa rugosa that is this robust to put in something else. I mean, obviously nobody walked out to the site and looked at it, but this is a very robust Rosugosa, six feet long, four foot tall, four feet deep, right where you're talking about taking stuff out. Most of the rest of it is junk along there. There's an evergreen tree at the other end. I don't know whether that's uh, appropriate for the area. So I think we need to revisit the um, restoration job there and make sure that that is correct of what they're doing and that uh, we, we get something that we wanted to do. The green colored in areas on your drawing, what is that, that uh, finish? It's representing that it would be a grass and sand type application, wild grass planting through here. Wild grass? Yeah. Not, all right, not uh, yeah, turf grass. No, yeah, wild grass. It's incorrectly labeled on the plan, but it'll be a wild grass. All right, that's, that's good because we told people across the street that they had to get rid of some of their grass to build their house, and it's been under construction. So, and then you, the town coming in and putting turf grass in would... That would be a wild. It would be a wild mix of some type? Correct. All right, uh, that's, that's good to hear because that's... Um, all right. Um, are you putting any fill in the parking lot itself? Um, a little bit, this area from this limit line here to this limit, it will be filled. To are you are you are you putting a gravel on it or anything? Gravel, it's gravel to match what's out there. It's gonna be the exact same material. Not a lot of gravel on. <laughs> it's actually about zero percent gravel around there. Well, there's some on the north end, but most of the thing is not gravel. It's dirt. All right. So you're gonna put some gravel and dirt. All right. Um, and on the south side, you're you're just adding. I mean, what's on the plan, Correct. which was never presented and to us, and I don't believe that was at all on the original CLE plan. So that should have come in front of us because we hadn't seen anything. Uh, now, this is a picture I took this morning of the fill. So you can see we got Phragmites running up here. We have Phragmites and seagrass running below 
the high water line. Oh, we got this dirt spot. You have any explanation why nothing's grown up through the dirt? Uh, it hasn't been planted and there's no seed source in there for any of these drones. Salt water is dominant in that. That's the area of the. Right. Animal. And if, I think I saw the pictures in the end. That was two and a half feet deeper than it is today. Yes, your pictures that you gave us beforehand show boulders on the side. There was a coastal bank. Actually, in the project manual, you describe it as a coastal bank. So why aren't we trying to get it back to a coastal bank there? There was a, between the, between the seagrass that was on the outside here, there was a dirt area that had no vegetation, which still has no vegetation. There was a coastal bank, and then there was the slope. Why did we fill in? Why aren't we trying to get this back to the way it was prior to the alteration? Okay. So rather than have that as new salt marsh, you'd want us to fill in further seaward to create No, no. Back? I want you to no. excavate all this fill that is very obvious where it went that you, that's about two and a half feet deep. And get that out of there and make it look like the rest of the coastal bank that was around there. Because well, you no, should I, never I, have been there. I believe if that was the coastal bank and now it's been taken down to a lower elevation, which now is inundated with the tide. Yeah. The other thing, just to remember, Scott, because we've been going out there for years with all the different projects that are going on there. That whole edge was altered with all the years that there was a That's boat right. yard there. I mean, Parts and, of it were but, boat motors. But, but the thing is, I travel all over the United States to boat yards. They all have those ugly edges because they can't be touched. All over the United States, they have that ugly edge because they can't be touched anymore because they're not supposed to be touched. So you touched it, you should restore it back to the original shape. Um, going back to the orders and conditions, have you ever seen this? Art the town. Yes, I have. Can I ask you why they're not in here? It was an oversight. It wasn't anything intentional. But it, it, it's, it's required in here. It says that the order condition shall be in the bid package. Why wasn't it put in there? It was, it was an oversight. It was an oversight. And you have no other way to explain it. And it should have been there. Right. And if you had read them, I'll read number 45 again. The applicant shall submit copies of all construction plans and documents to the Conservation Commission for their review and approval prior to the commencement of each construction phase. I consider this, that, that notice of intent, an after-the-fact notice of intent that went here in front of you, and that the entire plan is open for our review and everything that you're doing. And I, you know, I don't know how an oversight like that happens in a project like this. So, you know, that's where I consider we're at at this point. Now, it was stated that the, the walkways are ADA compliant. I read the document, ADA compatible, much different word than compliant. So, I mean, I don't, the material is the material you want to use, and I don't have any trouble with it. But telling us that it's compliant when it says compatible is an issue because it is soft. It doesn't meet one of the requirements of being firm, which is required in the ADA. Huh? I actually read the, the whole code, both codes, the 1991 and the 2010 code. So um, because I used to have to work on it, I wanted to make sure I had remembered what I had to do with it. Um, how many benches are along this thing? Uh, there are two areas for concrete benches, two benches each, so four. And you're trying to be ADA compatible. Why isn't there a bench along the north side of the project? Because the ADA code requires a bench every 200 feet. I would have to ask our landscape architect that. They provided us the location of the benches. All right. Um, so, and, um, 
and we're recommending doing the planting, these plantings as soon as possible, which is a change in the order because in the project management and in order 47, we can't do any plantings to September 15th. And I think you actually picked the later date in your book. So you're asking for, for that change if we commence construction soon. Is that correct? All right. Um, and to be quite honest with you, if this had come in front of us, I would have much preferred probably telling, uh, looking at a, um, at a plank um, boardwalk instead of trying to put in one of these things. Now, what are we doing with the, um, the coastal bank or the f coastal dirt that you took out on the north corner, of northeast corner, uh, north here. west coast corner? We took an awful lot of, set of dirt and sediment out of that corner. So we brought back to what was existing. So it's going to be brought back to the, and well, how are you going to match the, um, the soil composition of what was there? Because it was kind of really silty and soft and some other things. Uh, Dan, I have to refer back to you. I mean, you how, what? I know, I'm saying this is going to be what are you concerned, Scott? Well, I'm concerned that the soil that is put back in that northeast corner is, is, is compatible with what was there, which was very, a very fluffy, marshy type of soil. And I don't know how you get a hold of that stuff to put it in there. But what do you, what my, type? My, my impression is that's the same material that that Phragmites is, is very dense and, and very prolific. I don't think we want that kind of material. It would be much better if it could be a well-drained sandy substrate. But that was natural. That was what was there. But it was, I, it's, I a did filled, it's a filled edge. If you want to fill edge back, we can do that. I, I don't know if there's anything real natural that was there, to be honest with you. Well, we know that a lot of this area, when we did the end of sunset, is the dredging right. out of the harbor. Right. We know a lot of this stuff got mm. pumped there in, I think, 1935, I think, was, uh, was when a lot of this stuff was moved. So uh, it's more natural than most, actually, natural sediment. All right. Um, are you putting a fence around that, uh, the, the, on Fo Foster Road, the, uh, here? Yeah. The existing fence is being relocated. There's an existing fence along the back edge. It's being relocated to the front of the dune. Well, and I'm just looking at this picture. I mean, there is no fence. They're putting boats in that area. So there's well, a 420 the in sitting in here in that area. It's the fence between the second access road and this one story building. I think that might be the first building here. There's no fence in between these two buildings. Oh, right, right. It's the fence north of that second building. Well, I th yeah, then maybe we need to think about what's the appropriate amount of fence to keep people from just throwing boats directly back on your, your stuff, obviously. All right. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I know personally I would like to see some way of getting the dirt out of there that was pulled in and then, you know, there's an awful lot of dirt that was put into that coastal bank. Jim, did you look at the pictures that Scott had? Those are the pictures that are in your file, the before pictures. Yeah. But the, the earth that Scott's talking about, do you think that that's a good idea to remove that or should we continue to put plant material on top of it at this stage? What do you think is the... the material on, the north, on that north side? No, 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 I'm talking about... The, the brown area that's showing up here where there where it was obviously very it was much lower a different composition than where the Phragmites is showing because there was never any anything growing there completely different thing there was a a brown patch that ran between the outer um, sea grass sea marsh or saltwater marsh stuff and the inner stuff there was a, a definite depression and it definitely <laughs> clear. You know, a definitely uh, nothing was growing in there. So 
we should go back to what it was. Why I'm just asking that? Jim as a. If you look, if the landscape area is an unofficially filled area, if you, if you lower that area at all, you're going to allow the tides to inundate farther, and you're going to more than likely accelerate the erosion of the bank and the plantings that you're putting in, if I understand you correctly. So I, I think we need, I think we do need some slope on that embankment if you want to protect the work that you're doing, the walkway, the boats, the fills, the use of the boat yard. You're going to have to have some stable slope on the embankment and that appropriate plantings to maintain the stability if you want to protect the area that you're enhancing in the upland. Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. you know, I, would, I would suggest that um, <coughs> I'd like to see as much salt marsh as possible be planted in that area, but you've got to balance that with the stability of the, of the coastal bank as well to protect the walkway and all the other improvements that you're doing. Okay. All right. Um, how many parking spaces are we having now? We haven't done anything with parking spaces from the original. We're not encroaching on any of the original parking. We don't know how many spaces they currently have, but we're not taking any of that away. All right, I mean, I have a miniature copy of the original plan here. Yeah, they, they and they had 165 listed. Yeah, I would, I would say it would be the same because we are not changing. You're not significantly changing the shape of the parking. All right. And, mm -hmm. and we've gotten rid of the pier, and you're not going to have your deck, right? That no. was That's on the drawing. It's considered as a future. So hopefully that will come in front of us if we, if they ever get that far again. And because the order of conditions will still be in effect for any future construction phases that happen on the site, whether you're the engineer of record or somebody else's. All right. Um, I think that covers everything that I had as comments and questions. Paul? Um, getting to how we got to where we are, you were talking about, you know, why you moved the path where you did and this is not as wide now were those I don't have the, the original plan in front of me but the original plan that conservation saw those changes were from that plan Correct. yes okay and nobody thought to come back to conservation with a new plan no we didn't we didn't think that the, plan, that the changes were substantive enough to warrant coming back Right. I mean, when you have a plan with, with dimensions and, and an approved, this is where you're going to put the path, this is where you're going to put the house, this is where you're going to put the structure, and you just you start moving things, those are all, in a resource area, they're all material changes. That's all I have. Okay. Um, Tony? Yeah. Um, I had asked at the last meeting if we couldn't have your plan superimposed on the original plan that we approved. And my reason for that is that I wanted to see the walkway now versus the way it was. Um, Susan, can you, maybe it's on there. No, we do have that in the office. Oh, in the office. Yes. That's a good place for it. Um, we brought it, it was brought to the last, the first meeting that. No, it wasn't. No, we didn't have it. Yeah, no. Oh, I had it with me with the town Yeah, good. Um, could you, on, on, the, on the west side, just sort of draw the original, on the west side, draw the original, uh, again, you're on the east side at the moment. Coastal Bank, right? Oh, here. On the Coastal Bank, that's right. Okay. Just sort of come up. It's sort of with it, your, it with went your like this, and then it came up through here. Right. That's and then right. went That's up what, along okay. this fence. That's all I need to and know. And then came off this way. Um, Tony, you want to? I can. I have it here in a bigger space. I can see it. Oh, you want to see it? No, I'm not. Highlighted in 
I'm focusing on the, the walkway on the west side, um, sort of taking up on, right, on, on what Penny said. Um, it was purported that the, that the new walkway is um, a little different. To me, it's a great deal different. It's considerably closer to the edge of the uh, uh, of this walkway and leaves no room at all um, for for any plannings on, on on west of it. And I just I I think that it's an absolute travesty what you've done. Um, and whether we can, I, 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 I can't say anymore. I, I don't have any questions. Okay. And I got one more question. The condition of the path as it is now, is it salvageable or does it have to be removed? It's salvageable. Uh, I just uh, landscape architect did come out and met with Jim and uh, Mark Patterson and Kevin Cafferty um, in July and with someone, is it Reed? Mm -hmm. And they are all, Reed, person from Reed and Clarissa Rowe, our landscape architect, is in agreement that it can be salvaged. It doesn't have to be removed. Um, Jim? I, I just want, I just want to bring your attention. Uh, I, have, I have some recommendations that I want to put before the commission, but I don't know if you want to hear those first or you want to hear from the audience first. But I do have some recommendations that we get to come out of the from here. So I don't know if you want to hear those now or wait to hear from the audience first. Um, maybe that would be a good idea. Kevin, you're all set? Yeah, why don't you um, do that so that everybody can take that in and then comment on what happened here plus your thoughts. I think that would be a good way to do that. Yeah, and this is important, you guys. Yes. This is important to hear because a lot of this is how this pertains to this resource area in general, and I think it's important to understand that whole perspective. So my recommendations are based on the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Right. <coughs> Presently is up against the up against the fence. It's proposed to put a grass area there. It would be nice if there were some salt tolerant plants planted there rather than just wild grasses. But my point on that is, with the grasses there, there needs to be some type of barrier to prevent the cars and the boats from being placed on the grass area for 
maintenance purposes. So it needs to be that needs to be protected in some way. Because that's going to be important for the drainage and that whole part of the um, parking lot itself. That's those are the beginning of my recommendations. Okay. I think that need to be acted on immediately. Do you have a list of those? Can you or you can? I can write them up tomorrow. Okay. Um, so, anybody in the audience? Yes, sir. Ken Loring, I live next door at 11 Conroy Terrace. I also own property on Edward Potser Road. So I'm the immediate abutter to this whole project. I have in front of me, and I'm sure you do, the original plan from CLE that was approved by Corps of Engineers, Board of Appeals, and by the Conservation Committee. And I'd like to point out some things that have changed here that have not been addressed in this conversation tonight or the other nights. First thing you have mentioned, the, the uh, placement of the walkway. Now, the walkway was originally placed in on the Marine Park side of a swale, which is a drainage swale, which was put in to carry the water, which is a result of filling in the Marine Park. You may recall that they used, you know, about two and a half feet of fill all over the whole Marine Park. That water is currently, you've got the, the new plan here shows the uh, drainage lines. The drainage lines drain to a swale. And I can't say for certain, I certainly could hire the engineers from uh, CLE, but I suspect they put the walkway as a delineation marker between the marine park and the swale to leave a separation zone, if you will, a buffer between um, my property and the rest of the marine park so the boats wouldn't end up on the swale. They're actually in the, in the area where the, the um, old, the first plan, the swale was on my side of the walkway. Now, why did they move it and why did they put it there, I can't say. But they have moved it to the other side of the drainage swale. Now, that's meant to be kept clear. If you park boats on it, allow people to drive on it, allow people to walk on it, it compacts it and look exactly what will happen, what did happen to the area you already worked in. You said today that you had to remove eight inches of fill and then put in a compacted material near the walkway, which is why the walk, nothing can drain through the walkway. They've already done that. And it's a flood over there now, even in today's rain. The water runs all down First Cliff, Edward Foster Road, goes right into the Marine Park, and it has to go somewhere. Now, it's supposed to go back into the ground through that swale, and there should be sand. And the original plan called for a tree and plantings. It, the plantings say on, on the original plan, it says um, typical. Proposed, well, proposed shrub planting typical. And that's in the area between the walkway and the fence, which is the boundary of the marine park. I can't say why they did it, but they must have had some good reason. Now, the discussion in the, in the letter that Tibbetts sent, which is part of this application, is that it's not in the plan, but Mark Patterson suggested that we could put boulders, or you could put someone, it's not clear who would do it, but boulders and planting in that area. Now, since it's not on here, but it is Mark Patterson's statement that it would occur, I respectfully suggest that it should be on the plan. That it's, they took out a tree and they took out plantings. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight we've heard a lot about mitigation. I can't believe they could just take out the plantings. But it's, it's gone, it's not in the original plan. So anyone who wants to look at the original plan, I happen to have the original copy, but again, approved by everybody and your brother. Um, and it looks to me, and I don't have, I'm not the engineer, but it looks like they did move the walk from the original plan a little bit towards the water. Yeah. But that's something that an engineer can figure out with a, with a ruler. It's, it's up to you people where it actually is placed on the north side. I would ask why we don't keep that buffer on, on the prop on the adjacent, on the section where the swale is next to my property. That's really just a question to think about. I don't know why they did it in the first place. Corps of Engineers approved it, and you approved it, and then they go and move it. How do we know that's not gonna be filled up with boats and cars? I've had people drive cars across my lawn and trucks to work on the back of their boats. Now, this is when they thought it was Young's property. But people park their cars behind those boats to work on. Are we going to keep them off the... So your suggestion is possibly a row of boulders or something if the walkway stays as they propose, but keeping a row of something... Well, I think the best thing would be a planting all the way along to delineate that area and protect the drainage swale. Mm -hmm. It was in the original plan for some reason. I don't know what, but it was there. So now we're just going to 
change it? Yeah, no. It doesn't add up. Um, That's the, the rest of the stuff, I, uh, I think they had talked to me, uh, I met on the site with them about the drainage from the walkway. The walkway's actually put in three inches lower than my property, so any water that runs there would run into the swale instead of into the field. You'll note the grass, the, uh, the open field that's there, it used to be a boat yard. Right. And I restored it, I just as soon not see it, all the water from the muck park coming into it. So um, that, that's really the only question that I would draw is that they did take out a tree and they took out the plantings. I, I think they should be put back. There was one comment here um, that the uh, ponding within the parking lot should be prevented from occurring after storm events, provided the lot is properly graded during construction and adequately main maintained thereafter. The maintain thereafter is my question, not maintaining the park now. There's ruts as you drive in there that are full of water. So if we're creating a maintenance issue, we need to have a plan to maintain going forward. And uh, you can't just, this isn't a one shot deal. You're going to have to maintain the fragmites and uh, uh, it's not going to last. That was my comment to Corps of Engineers in 08. That's the first time. All I have. What are you in the green shaded area now? What are you proposing to plant there? Wild grasses. This, this, this plan depicts this immediate phase of the project, which is um, um, supposed to be under construction now. Um, we were asked not to include any plantings in here that they would be done at a future phase, I guess for budgetary reasons. That's, that's why we're not showing anything on the plan. May, can I ask a question? If that green area is going to be some type of grass, why was that walkway moved against the fence? Because You're not parking well, she, cars. She explained that the location on CLE's this. plan, where the swale actually is built, right. the walkway would have been right on the swale. And if we moved it here, it's further into the parking lot, taking away from the park, not boat storage, from the parking lot itself. So we moved it on this side of the pump station along the fence. I was under the impression that the swale, when we were out there, was part of this project. Was part of this was down was part farther. Of this project. Wasn't the swale what? part of this project? We have been told by There's a swale in there. the engineering There's already a swale there. it's already been built. Yes. And our survey, when we surveyed, it is in this location. When we were out there, we were just told it was, I thought, the corner near the street. Okay. But I'm, right now, I guarantee you, people are going to put boats there. And pe people are going to park there if you do not have plantings. You know they are. Is there anybody out, Mr. Sloan, do you have any other, you want to add anything? The only comments that I have is, okay. I don't understand why this would be changed. It doesn't, there's no logical reason, except the location of the swale, but the original swale was over further yeah. to catch the runoff. I, I saw the guy dig it. Mm -hmm. I could bring him into a meeting if you want to hear, hear I know his name, I saw the guy run the yeah. machine. Yeah. He told me what he was doing. He, he said, I filled it all in, but you won't get any water in to damage this field because this is... It's all going to drain there. Mm -hmm. There's actually two of them that are supposed to be in here, and there was discussion about connecting them. But, um, you know, the, we had a plan. Okay. Yeah. Is there any... Yeah, there's no actual final plan of where the swale actually is. Right. <laughs> is there anybody else in the audience that wants to speak to that? Yes. Okay. Um, Sean Murphy, chairman of the Waterways Committee. There was a recommendation if we could move the, uh, the walkway to the north. Basically, if it was on the south side, you would have boats right there. Uh, Mark was concerned about the, the boat yard contract with first to be on Deputy Flight Chief. Don't worry about safety. Somebody's boat is right there getting sanded. So we always intended to have a buffer there. You know, there was some planning taken out of this whole project, but we didn't have enough money. So hope to do it in the future. If we have some money left over, we're going to do it immediately upon your approval. But some things, there were some more plantings up there, but Obviously, a buffer zone, all that green in a swale, there will not be any boats put there. And that'll be very clear with the boat yard contract that Citra Boat uh, works, who works very close with the town. 
they're involved in this project, they're aware of what's going on. I guarantee you there's not going to be both cut any, any, any further, any buffer zone put there. But I agree, um, Mr. Loring deserves a buffer zone. Everybody that walks in that park deserves that buffer zone. And whether it's rocks, plantings, or a combination of rock planting and grass, it should be done. But, you know, the, the situation of both works is, is and Mark will be over there. Mark is basically the property manager who make sure there's no books up there. And, and I know Chitra Fort Works will work, has worked very closely with the town. They've done a great job, and I know they work. But they're a contractor that can come and go. I mean, you have a contract. They have a potential 30 contract. They have 10, 10, 10. And right now, they are, they are doing very well. Um, they've, they've met all their goals that they felt for five or six years they met in the second year. They're at capacity right now. But they're very reasonable to work with, and I know there'd be no issues them going any close, but maybe boulders, plantings, or whatever. There should be some sort of enhanced park feature so that so nothing will be encroached upon. Could um, either pieces of stone, granite, something like that, could they be put there and be in compliance? There wouldn't be any reason that they couldn't be a row of stone. It's a barrier beach, but if we're not doing anything that would impede any movement or anything, we could. A, a row of stones could be put across there, as long as they weren't maybe connected. I'll have to do that when brought about compliance. Right. What about? I'm just stone? trying to think. We we can't build a. St <laughs> you know, we're on a we're on a barrier beach, and and to Mr. Loring's piece, I mean, we should be a lot more sensitive to what's here. We want to figure out a way to do that, and at the same time, not not be in compliance with what we can. I, I would be the last ones to tell someone that they could put stones up on a barrier beach, so we have to be a little careful. No, it's got to be a tent. Always will have a buffer um, from that walkway. Again, just right. so, so but it would be safe. It would be a nice place to sit. You don't want to be sitting here if, if you have all grass over here and a path here. That was why the recommendation was made. Obviously, it wasn't clarified for your panel, and that, that was the issue. But that was the reason why we made the recommendation. But vegetation would be more compliant. I mean, if you take a Virginia rose or a rose of Rosa, a pony bush, yeah. you maintain it and you make sure that it survives. You, you're trying to walk through rose of Rosa or Virginia rose. Okay. I'm just trying to think about. I'm just trying to think about stopping a travel lift and moving a boat back into there. No, and uh, rose of Rosa is not going to stop a travel lift. I don't think that's the issue. I, I really, I really think the casual use of a guy who wants to pull his pickup truck in, and sand his his bottom, or do whatever they do. Mm -hmm. You, know, you have a big open field, all bets are off. Right. You know, I, I had a guy drive in my driveway right across the field. All right, I'm sure. Well, so we, but if, if that were planted with like a rose or a gosa or something. I think it's delineation. Just like you have, a, you've asked what tonight with several people. The 50 foot zone, let's make some sort of definition there. Okay. It could be a nice row of rose or gosa. It would look great for the, the pot, the, all the dogs that come with like the rose or gosa, right? <laughs> <laughs> Could we take the plantings that we have along Edward Forrester Road, that va value of them, and use them as that delineation at this point? Uh, at, we have uh, along Edward for this um, restoration area, there's a whole row, of, you know, I don't know how many feet is that, 7,500 feet of, mm -hmm. of stuff? It's 24. 24 well, that's a good start to make your delineation and lead that to the well, later project. I don't, I don't think they can they can figure out a way to pay for it. Well, that's not going to be our. That's not a lot. Well, I mean. Frank, can I ask something? Sure. Uh, Mr. Uh, you would make a comment about the water coming off this way? Yeah, it runs right down in with Foster. Right. E and not even with a, 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 a wave of flow, which we do get in a high tide and storm. Just the rain, everything on up in the first cliff runs right down Edward Foster, bucket loads of it. And as it, it turn, comes down to the marine park and turns the corner, goes right into the park. Yeah. And how does, how does the way the, uh, uh, the walkway is going to be put, how, how does that going to change that? Well, we just want to make sure the water that runs into the park can run into the swale swell doesn't get plugged up. The difference between the park is aesthetic and it's really up to the board where they, probably not even up to the board, but someone else at, at administrative level, where do you put the walk? It's your property, and I don't think there's any setback on a walk. But I don't 
don't know that it affects it. You just want to. I think we should keep the swale in the buffer zone that was in the original. The original plan had the walkway as the delineation. Right. Now, if you want to change that, that's your property. You know, I can't say you shouldn't change it. But I do think you need to keep the buffer zone and define it. Right. If you can define it with plantings, I think they'd be much more attractive. And we can we can do that. We can discuss that with the agent and come up with the best way. Maybe it's a combination of roses, but maybe be. In order for those to get established, maybe there has to be a fence erected or something in in the meantime, if it's a wooden fence or whatever, until the plantings are well established. We can we can work on that. We will look at that drainage area because I think you're right. If, if the drainage is coming down, Edward Foster Road is going into the parking lot. It's just that the area is not permeable enough or it's a volume of water that can't be permeated quickly. We, I mean, we do need to relook at that. Okay. But it sounds like this swale was more than just a, a depression. It sounds like they dug it out and put some sort yeah. of draining type material. They did. They put in a lot of heavier gravel so it would hold the water and then it would go back into the earth. Okay. I, I just want to make a comment. Howie Caseberg, 143 over the Foster Road. Uh, by the way, I'm not getting any green card notification on Billy Post to the property. So I don't know why that's occurring. Um, <laughs> that aside. <laughs> vegetation on Edward Foster Road, I agree it's very robust. I believe the original plan called for a dune restoration along, the, along that way, which would mimic what's on the south side of the entrance of the park. That was put there to mitigate some of the water coming down Edward Foster Road, and some of the water went to the park to the swale and drain. The rest of it was to channel it all the way down to the open green park. So uh, that was essential to the classification, I believe. Okay. Uh, I think we need to look at the existing plants that are there. I don't think we should be pulling out any of the roads or roads or the natural plants that are there. We shouldn't be pulling those out. We should work with them in that dune area. Those type of plants grow in dune areas. So I just imagine we're going to visit that. Okay. All right, that makes sense. I mean, I know you've been involved with it since inception. Yeah, I'd like to go back on the list and be notified of these meetings. Is it a distance issue? Or I don't know why. Yeah. It's 200 feet. Who, I, it, that's your office that's sending those out? Um, yes, but we get the list from the assessor's office. They provided us the list. A okay. hundred foot radius from the project. I I was okay. Two. All right. Well, hopefully we're not going to have too many more hearings on that. Um, is there anybody else in the audience that wants to speak to this tonight? Um, Jim, you made a list of your concerns. We can make sure that you have them. I think you guys already had some discussion. Um, I think you guys should be giving Mass Paving some clear direction on how to deal with that slope going, the, the um, marsh rest restoration, and get that moving as quickly as, as possible. Um, and then we need some clarification on how you're going to protect that buffer or plant it out. With all due respect to There was a, this was another issue. There was a dredging, we're talking about the same thing. There was a dredging program that went on. There's, there's some marsh restoration that has to occur that we're still finding out what, yeah. But I don't think that has anything to do with this.
much salt mine draft he did as possible, given the given the contour and elevation of the which I'll ask for. But I think as much salt mine draft in here, but we're still the town still needs to be addressed in the time with the other terms of climate, which was additional salt mine pressure, which was not carried forward in this phase. So I don't think I don't think that's I don't think that's a burden on the present consultants because they were not and, and we are working on that. We've gone to talk to the town administrator and other people address the other conditions and the other grounds. Paul, can I ask you a question? Because I'm not sure. When we're doing an amended order, do we close this like a regular hearing, then write an additional set of orders? So, just give me some help with this. So we're really not going to close anything. So we can either vote to approve this tonight, or we want to let some more modifications take place and then have an additional hearing, maybe adding in the pieces that Jim had, get that onto a plan. And it sounds to me like a little bit like In the meantime, can we do anything more to stabilize that edge? Is that something that you guys can work out with, with mass paving so that you can get that? I mean, there's nothing really been happening there, and it right. should that, be. That, that can be done. Okay. I would, I, I, I would, I was going to bring that up. I think we are stabilizing the bank, and I think we are going to move that silk curtain to the proper location okay. immediately. Can we do that as an emergency? Under the, under, under the direction of the agent watching them. I think we need to reset that, reset that silk curtain and stabilize it. We'll at least stabilize the lower part of the bank and we're going to end up with more salt. Right. Salt impact. I'd like to see that happen. We can just do that under the existing order of conditions that we would ask them to stop the additional impact. Okay. okay. All right. And I assume that you're going to be talking with DPW. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have a motion to continue this? My recommended yeah. goal is just, you know, for the next hearing, my recommended goal is uh, we've got to get the, we, we want to be in a ready position to get these salt tolerant plants and the salt mark plants in as soon as possible after the optimum time. Okay. And the most going to be coming out of the water within weeks. So I'm just, I, and I, we need to work aggressively to get all of this shaped out. And get the it's got, but we, get to, we have to make sure we have a, a plan. All right. So at this point, are we comfortable with allowing them to continue that walkway piece, or is that something that's going to happen after? No walkway until they fix what they what? did. There's no reason that can't happen in a couple more weeks, right? Is I it? Think it can. I, I would have liked to have seen it move. So I think I'm just echoing some of the other committee's comments. I mean, it, it's in place now. I think tearing it up is going to cost time, money, and additional impacts. Walkway, which was further away from the top of the coastal bank, because if there is a storm and it's erosion, it's going to hit. You know, it's going to damage the walkway. But I think we're stuck between a salt marsh grass and a rocky marsh, a rocky and a hot place. We need to move forward. Okay. And I, I think they, my recommendation was I think we need to move forward on the walkway, given the information we have on the material. If that's acceptable to the commission, I think we, are, I think we should move forward on that. But I'm, I'm not convinced we should do that right now. I think, I think the Silk curtain, the stabilization of the bank, the feature should be done immediately. And I think we ought to, I think we need to have something in writing approved by the commission to do anything else. 
Okay. All right. So we'll get a motion. Nope. Go ahead. So I just don't think they should work on the sidewalk until they accommodate Jim's recommendations. Okay. All right. All right. And you're going to keep a dialogue with these guys, get that stuff in the list. And okay. I make a motion to continue 117, 119 Edward Foster Road to August 29th at 645. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, sir. One last question. Can we ask for a landscape plan in that buffer zone? Yeah. Yes. Yep. We can, we're going to get it landscaped. It's not going to be just a plan. Someone's so, got a landscape. Yeah. So what do, what are we expecting from the consultants in two <laughs> weeks? Jim's got a list, the, and he already spelled it out. I'll write it up tomorrow. I'll email, I'll, I'll, if this is acceptable, I'll write it up yeah. tomorrow. Send it to you and make sure I'm not over the list. Okay. What I think should be done in your hands before the next year, and you guys, we can work together and supplement. Yep. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. At our seven forty five show cause hearing for TK O'Malley's. Seven forty five. I should have asked you rather than Paul. Right. Well, um, okay, it's almost ten o'clock, so we just want to get this done. I hope, um, Continue. Would somebody go out and tell Mr. Kruzkoy that he's not going to get a notice, but it's just continued? <laughs> oh, I think. Um, all right. So the only, I think the only thing that's left here is um, TK and then TK O'Malley's, right? Well, we got um, we got orders. The agents report and orders. They're going to be short. I hope so. <laughs> that's so. Um, I don't have anything to. Read on that, right? Show cause here? Yeah. yeah. I don't no. think it no. So, um, for TK O'Malley's, the show cause hearing for the pilings? For the, for the, for the, uh, for the, for the pilings, for the pilings, for the pilings, for the Is there anybody here for TK O'Malley's? He, he left. Um, no, 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 right, no, right. No, and no, I'll, re I'll read this no, letter. No, I just didn't know if there's anybody yeah, else no. here. Oh, or, or, then, um, is that it? Okay, so earlier, um, Attorney Orenberger came in and he was unable to attend the meeting at the time, although he probably could come after his meeting that he was at. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, he was delivering a letter on, the, on behalf of his client, Walter uh, Collins, a trustee for 194 um, Front Street Realty Trust and the owner of um, T.K. O'Malley's. Um, Please be informed that the dock and float system was not installed in the proper uh, permitted location. I am working with uh, Ray Quinn, president of SciTech Environmental Inc., the project engineers, and Joffrey A. Lake, general manager of Sea and Shore Contracting Inc., the project contractor, to take the appropriate steps to relocate the dock and float system to its proper permitted location. I've also been in contact with John G. Bowman. Council for Michael Bowman, um, trustee, owner of the abutting property, 206 Front Street, which um, has a docking system. I am presently working with my client, Mr. Quinn and Mr. Lake, to remedy the existing issues. 
My client plans to relocate the dock and flow system and pilings to the proper permitted location following this year's boating season to enable the dock and flow system to be utilized for the 2012 boating season. I am appearing before the commission at 6.15 agenda time, but I am unable to be in attendance at the 7.45 p.m. agenda time due to a previously scheduled meeting in which I must be in attendance. I will keep in touch with the commission as things progress to work with the commission to remedy the existing situation. And I'm just reading that because Mr. Ornberger was in earlier and just asked that that be part of our record for this evening. Anybody have any? Yep. Mm -hmm. If something happens to somebody's property or an individual, this is going to be some liability. Issue. I think it's a very dangerous situation. I would suggest that that pier needs to be taken out. The day, the day that they allowed to do work in the harbor, that pier needs to be taken out under, under some enforcement order. Whether okay. the state moves in or whether we move in, I'd like to get a letter. I'd like to request. I'd like to request a letter from the harbor master, asking for his opinion whether or not that situation is a public hazard. Okay. Well, should we shut it down now? Well, it, it is shut down. down. It's shut down. That's right. right. The, 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 the floats were moved, and the piles were taken out, not by the, not by the applicant, not by the person who put them in, but yeah. by, by the um, by the woman. The yeah. They pulled them out so that they could, <coughs> so they could operate somewhat safely for this season. But they still have the... the, the piles There's still pi here, so piles there that need to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can they... Can they do all the work that they basically have to do, which is remove and rebuild under their existing set of orders and conditions? Or is there anything that we have to tell them that in addition that they have to do? Is there something in the process of pulling the pilings out that creates siltation that creates another level of work they, or protection or something that they have to do? We'll need, we'll need the opinion of DMF to make sure that we're not in any fisheries windows. As long as the fisheries windows end, then I think sure. they will have the ability. And then we could decide whether we're going to allow them to give us an amended order. Except they already have a that, sticker. All they're going to do is build the structure that we approve. Yeah, but they, they but it's a little more complicated because technically they got a certificate of compliance. Oh, okay. That was going to they be did get one. Yeah, but that yeah. but that was based on their engineer's survey that the thing was in the right place. Our engineer didn't check the location, so. So, so I mean, I think, I mean, if they, if we don't have to take any action, well, we'll tell them that they have to take it. I out. think maybe we should. Um, well, besides telling them that it has to be removed. Right now, I think maybe the best solution would be to give them um, an enforcement order saying on such and such a date, you're, you're um, directed to remove any of the remaining piles that are incorrectly placed. What we can do is contact the Fisheries and Fisheries to find out what the earliest date they could do that. Okay. And, and then hold them to that. That sounds good. Not All right. Wait for the season, like that letter says. Wait, well, we'll wait for the season. Is there anybody in the audience that wants? I'm Mike Bowman, 206 Front Street. Um, a couple of issues, and I, I note the letter from Billy. Um, specifically in that letter, he notes the floats and the pilings. Um, he does not note the, the pier, which is built incorrectly. It should be noted that the entire pier should be removed. Um, all the 68% of that pier is on not only my property, but the lady that's in between my property and their property, there's another property. Um, it's completely on not very little of it's on there right as a matter of fact and it's supposed to there's supposed to be a 10-foot buffer from there where it was supposed to be built and their property um 
I think in answer to your question, I have I don't know a lot about this, but I have permitted a couple of marinas, and I can tell you that my order, their order of conditions was closed. Um, what they now have to do, is, in my opinion, would be to open up an order of conditions to remove the pier and remove the piles and the floats, and then come back in front of this board and apply all over again to do it again. Um, at which time we might not decide it. I mean, then we can say it might not be in the best interest of the town or in the best interest of the waterways to put the pier and floats back where we originally had them placed. Because I think when you go down there, somebody went down and took a look at the original plan and how it would sit in the water, I think we'll have a different opinion of whether it should be there or not. Okay. So we may be able to have it approved under an enforcement order. Right. Which, which that's a date certain and they couldn't find associated with that. If the first day is too many new fisheries, a lot of work is done. That's that work is done in the heart. That's right, Jim. And one of the things that I'd like to be done is um, I've dealt with these people since this whole this whole um, situation happened, and I'd like to get a, a date specific that they have to have it out of the water because it's up till now I've I've been the one that's done everything to get everything out of the water. I mean, I called you, Frank, right? To take a look at it, but um, they talk a good game, and they haven't shown me a lot about doing things uh, the way they should have been done. Okay. Right, they haven't removed anything yet, yeah, anything. right? Okay. As a matter of fact, when I told them about <coughs> it, they opened their ramp the next day and allowed customers to go onto their floats um, after I had already told them that it was on my property. Okay. <coughs> By just issuing an enforcement order, do we uh, open ourselves to any potential liability if anything were to happen? By even allowing it to be there? Do we have any do we have any acknowledgement from TKs that yes it is in the wrong spot? Armberg did right in the beginning yeah, of the series. Yeah. Yeah. And the the uh, assuming that he's their their representative, right. legal representative, he said it. it's wrong. We have to fix it. In okay. I had to hire a separate <coughs> engineer outside of my own engineer to come in and do a plan on them. I think I gave you a copy of it to show exactly where they were, and I think I gave you a copy of the print when, it, yep. when I looked at it that um, showed that it in basically that they were on not a, very little on their own property. And okay. Most, and they're also, in, in one of the safety issues is their entire dock system, which now floats free out on tilings, is in the middle of the federal channel buffer zone. So it I, is in the federal channel, and, and everything is supposed to be 30 feet off of that channel. They're just sitting directly in the middle of it. I think what we want to do, though, when we give them, I, I, maybe make a motion for an enforcement order, but the enforcement order ought to say we want them to remove any improperly placed peers and then leave it up to their discretion to decide which is improperly placed. I don't want to be directing them to just remove peers and then find out that some of them may be placed. Okay? Can I get a, can I get a second on that? One other thing. Well, one other thing I think we should say, and maybe before they go and start rebuilding, that they have to they should come back. Well, they won't. They can't rebuild. No, they have to come back. They can't rebuild. They're no, because right. it has it's to be closed. Yeah. Yeah. And that we want them done. We can, if we can get a time frame from um, fisheries, we'll give them a deadline. Now, what, what legal basis are you suggesting they can't rebuild the existing Well, the plan that they gave us isn't even in the right. Uh, well, we don't know the if they. The plan that they gave us shows the shows the pier and the float within the property boundaries. That's what we. That's what. They're yeah, but we gave them. After we gave them a certificate of compliance. compliance. It's, it's, Dead in the water. We allow them to build something now under something that's basically closed. I, I was thinking we didn't give it to them yet, and then I was going to say, well, now just build what we approved. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mr. Bjorkman. I, I just wanted to quickly state for Tony's question about any liability. In the order of conditions, there's a condition that says this order of conditions grants no private property rights, so there would be no liability in the commission. All right, I see. Okay. I'll let you have that. All right. So we had a motion, second? I second it. All in oh. favor? Aye. 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 Good. Moving on. All right. You don't want to stay? Watch us sign some orders. Yeah. The building permit is coming. Well, there's an issue here. Mr. McKeever lives at 94 Crescent Avenue. This is 86. This is the job that, you know, is currently that I think Mr. Anthony was going to be working yeah. on. This is a separate issue that there is existing drain. Lot 57 is part of 86. Plan, and it showed lot 57, but these drainage structures don't show up on any plan that's been approved by the commission. Has the, is the certificate compliant yet? Um, no. Well, no, and, and basically on this part here, again, this is being sold as a separate building lot, but the structures are on lot 57 and drain down here onto his property, causing drainage issues on his So were they being ripped out when they build a house there? I, I just I don't have that part of the history. All I know is that we got two no you know, idea how old unauthorized they are. drainage structures that are draining water onto Mr. McKeever's property. He's downgrading it. Wasn't this a septic? Si wasn't this a septic system for this property? Um, I was that a septic? That does he care? Yeah. Fifty-seven. No, but the uncle pipes are new. Right. Well, then maybe we all we need is a simple so, enforcement order and ask them to explain why there's. Why these things are being installed that aren't on the plan? Well, before an enforcement, just get a show cause hearing. Okay. Show cause hearing. Why yep. they put and it find out what's there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Show cause hearing means that the the people that are at Proctor, I guess that's the name, will have to come before the commission and explain what these are, and find out if they were properly permitted or or if they were legally. The whole the process to do this would be that we would have everybody that is involved come to a meeting <coughs> and then be able to give their two cents. And, and at that hearing, if, if the commission listens to everyone and then the next question is, okay, if for these structures that are here that never got a permit, they may be, we want to keep the structure, but now they have to file a permit, which would be notified to all the funding property and we'll just approve it. And then, or, I, I remember somebody, one of the proctors, talking about a sump down the hill from their house. Over the cliff. I think that's what sh the drainage structure that shows up at the property. Can, can we, you know what, it's already, yeah. it's way too late to do this tonight. Let's have a show cause <laughs> hearing. All right. I mean, I'm glad that it's brought to our attention, but I don't want to sit here at 20 after 10 and presume anything. But in the meantime, what is Mr. McKeever supposed to do about water? We'll have a show cause hearing at the next hearing. So he's getting drowned for the next two weeks. Okay. Let's stick to one thing. I'm getting it's one at a time. Yeah, there's a whole certificate for orders. Okay. There's a wooden bulkhead on the property that's not on the plan. Okay. So I'm going to ask us to give you one on the plan. Okay. Okay. Great. Yep. Is that we got two extension orders on for tonight for at the very end of your, the bottom of your agenda. Mm. One is for Mr. Harris, and one of the two is for Yep. And the other one is for Mr. 
Maestro Band. So, Mr. McKeever, you'll have a chance. You'll get something or check with the office and the show cause. Well, in two weeks? Yes, sir. It should be on the hearing on yep. the 29th. Yeah, thank you. Um, that in both of these projects are older projects and orders conditions were issued. And then there was a governor's extension act. And there's a little confusion because the order conditions issued by the county situation says they got to record orders with. I'm not finding anything in the, in the state wetland protection act that locks that down, and it's causing a little bit of a problem with this governor's extension act and the time frame involved in regarding the permits and then when you're supposed to you know, record these things in the 60 days that the town gives. Is that is that built in to the extension that the governor gives? Which I would assume the answer is yes. You write into the, the point. I'll, what I'll do is, and I, I mentioned this at one of the last meetings, I think pretty much everybody was here, but the, the confusion comes from the fact that the order of conditions <coughs> for, for anybody in situ that falls between these dates, October, excuse me, August 15th of 2008 and August 15th of 2010, um, while the order itself extended for a two year time frame, the state law isn't quite clear on all the interim time frames that are in there at the municipal level. At the state level, the, the, the interim time frames are all extended. So if you get 60 days, you now have two years and 60 days to record order conditions. From the conservation standpoint, the order of conditions is both a state permit and a local permit. So the confusion comes when the banks are sitting down to try to provide financing for these projects. Um, I know in Mr. Harris's case, he, he waited, he inherited the property, waited to uh, have it sold, and in order conditions was issued, there's a letter that comes in which he has with him that says, before you do any work, you have to record these orders at the registry. So he never opened it up. He just took that, waited until he had a buyer, and then the buyer came in and said, hey, there's a condition that says this should have been recorded in 60 days. So. In, in the chapter two, 240 at the state level, it says that a municipal body can make a declaration that it accepts chapter 240 and, and all the stuff that goes with it. That interim time frame at the state level can be continued by the commission, not just for the Harris's or the one that's a septic system, but for anybody that falls in that permanent extension act. And I was going to come in and talk to the commission about that individually, just to help the commission. But Mr. Harris is a buyer that won't go forward unless there's acknowledgement that not only this permit, but he also has a floodplain special permit and a zoning board permit that Thursday night is going to be on the zoning board of appeals. So the only way to try to get his to move forward was to request an actual extension on the order when in reality, I think what he's looking for is the extension for the time frame to uh, record the order. And the orders have been recorded. And I think the other one, Paul Marabito had, and I think those orders have been recorded too, I believe. He, Paul held a set of orders for over 60 yeah, days, I think. Yeah. And, and his have been recorded. So, I mean, things have been done. They're, they're set for pre-construction meetings and things like that, but it's just this little caveat about that one condition. And my, my general thing would be that the commission should probably look at following what 48 section 11 says for zoning permits is just that your order does not become valid until it's recorded at the registry of deeds and proof of recording is given back to the commission. And that's actually the way it's written in the Weapons Protection Act. It says the order doesn't become valid until it's recorded at the registry. Um, and I have the section on that. Um, I can give you the point, but but the municipal level is the issue, and it's just a matter of will the commission acknowledge that at the municipal level, the interim time frames will also be extended for, for anybody as well as for Mr. Harris. That's pretty much it. Thank you. 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 Thank you
And 796 Country Way. So what would you like to do? We, we could extend these two. It's really, it's just extending the time period that yeah. they have to record them. Yeah, really. Yeah, for right now, if you wanted, you're in a or even not Colonel two in the morning, we could extend these two and then we could still discuss the issue. Right. Yeah, I, I don't personally have a problem. We'll come up with a policy. But yeah. Or you could extend these two and we could talk about it at the next meeting. Yeah. Right. I, I still don't understand why we have the 60 day one. I've asked that question a few times. Right. I still can't figure out why. And, and, and Jim and I were talking about that earlier today. I think it's time to maybe change that language uh, because there's 60 day appeal under the bylaw. So we may want to say something, so take out the automatic and get a report, but say we would highly recommend that you record the orders and conditions maybe about 90 days down the line so that you pass the appeal period and make the file. So, you know, we don't have to say you get them, just what we highly recommend. Right, that's a good way to put it. So, so we want a motion? Yeah. Motion to extend the 60 day filing. Deadline for 102 Situate Ave and 769 Country Way. Sure. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think that was expiring too. That whole thing he said was expiring. Is that it? Anything else for the agent's report? Yeah, not from me. I didn't even get to speak. I stayed here from 7 to 10 30. Well, what you <laughs> learned? Yeah, never to apply for this position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Last week was All right. TV the whole time. Oh, my. But I have one more issue. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my umbrella. Okay. Good night. 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 Good Yes. Yeah. yes. Do you have a motion? I make a motion to ratify the enforcement order we heard tonight for TKO mailing. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. 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 You having fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a pretty good one. Um, okay. So, did, minutes? No. Orders? We have, four, we have right. Mahoney, number four, Peggotty Beach Road, remove sediment for access. Penny? Uh, make a motion to uh, Order. accept as written. A second. Yeah. Second. I, I, I had no problem. Do we have a second? I second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. D'Angelo, 39 Central Ave, a deck. Uh, I have two comments on the orders. Um, there's a uh, to one add an order uh, to remove the concrete walk that is to be abandoned under uh, the walk that's under going to be underneath the new deck instead of abandoning it in place because we had that in, and no sediment is to be removed from the property. I think is that in the, in normal orders or not? Because they're going to be digging a bunch of silent tubes and stuff. So the, those are the two things that I that I had notes from my on the documents that we we uh, talked about that weren't in the orders. Anybody have any trouble with those? No, I make a motion to accept the orders as amended by Scott. <coughs> I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Epicella, number six, Peggy Beach Road, deck and five-year maintenance for sediment removal. Sediment <laughs> In case you were wondering. Okay. It's hard to know it's gone. It drifts for anyway. I make a motion to accept the orders as written. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Town of Situate, Stockbridge Road, Sidewalk. Do we have a set of orders done for that? Yes. Okay. Any comment? No comments. No. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to accept the orders as written. Stockbridge. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's Aye. it.
A motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor.